you're going to now have multiple banks access your credit. And I'm going to show you how to do it, tell you how to do it right now without having it hurt your credit through multiple barred inquiries, which normally will reduce your score. The, the credit bureaus allow you up to 45 days. The Experian article says between 14 and 45 days to let people access your credit with hard pulls, and it will only weigh on your score as one hard pull. So we can let them compete, which is what we do here. We let banks compete for our business. We let dealerships compete for our business. We let buyers, cash buyers compete for our trades. And so the what you're going to do first is find your vehicle. That's the first thing. You do not, I know you may have heard, Deshaun, I should get a pre-approval. When banks start giving pre-approvals without hard credit pulls, with the with the, these three things need to go away for us to start getting pre-approvals because they're now on to us. They're on to the fact that savvy buyers are getting pre-approvals and it's a buzzword and they've now find a, they found a way to market to us and limit us through three things. Expiration dates, which means this pre-approval is only good for 30 days. Well, unless you're in an emergency shopping position, we don't like to rush our shopping. When you are shopping with your back against the wall and there's a timeline against you, you typically have to make a deal quicker. And we don't like that. Now, emergency situations, that's different. Second thing is people will say, well, in order to give you a pre-approval, we need a hard credit pull. We absolutely don't want to do that because that's going to open up the window and start that clock ticking to where the credit bureaus only say you only have a couple more days to let a lot of people access your credit before when that window closes. Now, a hard credit pull, if it dropped your credit nine points, for example, another hard credit pull is going to continue to drop it. So we don't want a hard credit pre-approval. And then the third thing is we don't want to limit where we can shop, we don't want to need to have a car. Some of the pre-approval will say, hey, well, we can't give you a pre-approval if you don't have the car first. Well, I'm only coming for the pre-approval so I can go find the car. So because those three things are set up, we don't get pre-approvals. Here's what we do. We are going to use the average interest rate, average interest rate, you can Google it, MarketWatch says it, you're going to put that into a budgeting tool. You can. I'm going to release soon my perfect budget calculator, which is in my book. Some of you who have my book, you know this. What it is, we plug in our interest rate, we plug in our ideal monthly payment, and it's going to tell us exactly how much we can spend on a car based on our state, taxes, fees, everything. You, you're, you're, That's coming soon. So just make sure you're tuned in. Make sure you're on my email list. Or if you want to use it today, it's in my book. It's in step three of our process. We only need a pre-approval to budget. No different than if we were shopping for a house. We're getting a pre-approval so we can go budget. So how do we do this? We don't, we don't let anyone access our credit until after we find our car. Once you find your best deal, your best car, then you're going to get the paperwork, a buyer's order. A buyer's order is simply a long form receipt um, that's going to show them that uh, you can now you can now come home and, and talk to many banks and credit unions as you want your bank online banks uh, on your credit union and this is the second round let these people fight at it you don't have to worry about this because this process of getting these bids is only going to take you two days if you do it the way i'm telling you to do it so you'll have plenty of time you're within the window and all these people are going to be fighting to throw money at you and offer you the best rate and now when you close that round which is your bank, your credit union, and online lenders, you can Google online car loans. Let all these people get a shot. We want as many bids as possible. After we get the best offer there, we're going to call the dealership and we're going to say, hey, this is the rate that I got. If you guys can beat it, I'll do the deal with you. That's round three. So round two is all the banks at home, credit unions at home, online lenders at home. Round three is can the dealer beat it? And that's how we know at the end of the day, we got the absolute best loan. There's no way possible we could have got lower because so many people were bidding. That's how we do it. That's the bank bidding war. All right. Great question, T, uh, Adrian. All right. Shoot the next one up. Welcome to everybody who just tapped in. We're on YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. We're bringing questions from all the platforms. 
So just type your questions. We're gonna, I'm going to get through as many as I can in the hour. All right, let's go fast as possible. All right, this is another one from TikTok. All right, listen, y'all, type your questions on Facebook and Instagram if y'all want to get in. TikTok is sending questions. Let's go. Dolan's going to pull your questions, but you got to type them. And make sure, if you haven't invited a friend, if you're enjoying the broadcast, tag one friend. Tag your best friend. If you gonna t- if you going to tag your best friend, imagine they go out shopping this weekend, overpay for their car. This, year that, this is your best friend. And you're saying, man, I didn't even invite them to Deshaun's show. All right. How negotiable are car prices when you get to the dealership? Uh, we don't negotiate car prices at the dealership. Stay on the show. Tune in. You you might you're you're probably new here. We never talk prices at the dealership ever. You have no leverage there. Or everything we do is from home. Our entire model is called cars from home. Ninety percent of your used car deals, if you use what I'm telling you, is done from home. 90 to 100 percent of your new car deal and your leases are done from home that's how you save the big money so stay on the broadcast and you know you'll you'll see how we do it here hold unlearn the old way that's what we'll be about here guys shoot the next one up um dolan uh perry the link to the book is in my TikTok bio click that picture of me just go right to the, the website you won't leave the broadcast you'll be able to hear us in the background get your book 30 minutes 75 percent off it'll be in your inbox and you know, a couple minutes. By the time you get off the show to be in your inbox, you can dig in. Go ahead, Dolan, shoot it up. Okay, this one's from Instagram. Just got your ebook. Excited to read it and learn. Awesome. Appreciate it. Use it. Use it. Go ahead. Shoot the next one up, uh, Dolan. Let's try again. Let's get through as many questions as we can. TikTok is asking all the questions I see. All right. So how do you start from home? Um, How do you start from at home? Well, it depends on where you're buying from, uh, what you're buying. If you're buying from, if you're buying from um, Instagram, I'm sure if you're buying from Instagram, if you're buying a new car or a lease, your process is going to be to get five offers. Who's shopping for a brand new car? Who's, who's going to be shopping for a brand new car or a lease? Type in for new because a lease is 99% of the time a new car. You're shopping for a new car, then type in. Okay. Here's your process, your goal, five offers. You're not going to see 80% of the dealers are overpriced. So out of those five offers, four are usually going to be overpriced and some by a lot. So once you actually um, start, and now you could do this two ways. Manual way, go test drive your car, make sure you like it, pick something you like. If you're leasing, I like to have three options because leasing programs vary. Sometimes a vehicle has a bad lease program and we won't know until we get the offers that there's a bad lease program. So once you figure out what you want, you come home, you call the sales manager, ask for the sales manager, you're going to get five offers. You must get five, at least. We like to get five to seven. That's the manual way, talking to a sales manager. Now, the way that I teach in my book is based on scripts that I wrote. So that's the only reason that I can't go all the way. I can tell you about the scripts, but in my book, I link you to the scripts because you're copying and pasting. So whether you do it the manual way or whether, like my strategy is called the 25 to 5. We're connecting with 25 dealers. That that gives us more inventory to shop out of. So if you call five dealers, yes, you can probably get to five offers, but you might have to call more because not everyone may have a car that you're interested in. So we shop out of 25 dealers to get five offers. And out of that five offers, one is going to blow the rest away. And that's how we shop for new cars. So that's how you would, that's the, if you just grasp that, that's how you want to go into your transaction with that mindset, which means when you're in the dealership, you're not interested in talking numbers. Do not. I had a woman come up to me a little while ago. Uh, mm-hmm. I was having breakfast and um, uh, and it was such a blessing. She came up to me. She said, I just want you to know you've helped me so much. I've used the last two cars. I walked in. I test drive. I said, I'm here to test drive. After I test drove, I was out of there. 
I said, now you're doing it. I said, God bless you. Because that's where you want to be. You don't talk numbers in the dealership at all. All right, go ahead. Shoot the next one up, Dolan. This one's from Instagram. What would you suggest when the dealer tries to run your credit for a test drive? Some places do that. Well, uh, first of all, it's not, it's it's a tactic. <laughs> it's like uh it's like walking into the mall and you're like, okay, yeah, I know I want to get me some new clothes. And they say, all right, can we have your credit card? You're like, wait, I haven't even looked at the clothes yet. Yeah, but can we just keep the credit card at the, you know, I need the credit card. That's how I want you to look at this. It's ridiculous. So how you prevent this is you, tr you, you call, I have a particular way that I set up a test drive on a new car. You don't do this on used cars. You can't do this on used cars. You're going to call. Ask for the salesperson that, that's been there the longest. I like to ask who's the person everybody loves. Who's the person been there the longest? Everybody loves them. Yeah, oh, that's Joe. Yeah, that's Joe. He's been here for 15 years. You know, hey, Joe, how you doing? Uh, you know what? I'm interested in coming in, looking at this car. Uh, I just want to test drive. You got to be clear, y'all. I'm only going to be there 20 minutes. When you tell them I'm here to test drive, you're letting them know I'm just shopping. I'm deciding what I want. See, shopping is different from buying. Shopping and buying are very different. And from now on, we're not going to mix the two. In my book, I have something called shopping, not buying. That's step four. That's deciding what you want. You're not going to let anyone rush you through this process. And you're also not going to take more time than you need to. So we're in the we're, we're going to call, set up the test drive. And uh, you don't need to have the exact car. If you're looking for a gray one, if you're looking for one that has the leather seats, as long as you're driving one similar, your goal is to make sure that you like it. And then when you come home, that's when you get offers. So uh, if you set up the test drive with the right person, then you'll have a smooth test drive if you set it up the right way. If you just go in, walk in, hey, I'm here to test drive, and you don't know who was next up on the platform. Now you got this new young kid. He's trying to sell a car. He done ripped a couple people off early. He's still learning the business. He don't know what he's doing. He just trying to make it money. Now he's like, oh, well, you know, I need your credit. And then he's depending on people who unfortunately are ignorant and think, OK, if you do that, if you need it, then I guess you need it. And we, we're not falling for those games anymore. OK, you're not going to fall for those games anymore. All right. Go ahead. Um, go ahead, Dolan. Shoot the next one up. Here's another one from TikTok. Um, how do you know a car rep is honest and trustworthy? You don't. That's why we don't look for relationships. I don't need my car rep to be honest and trustworthy. You're going to win the bid or you're not. We're not interested anymore in having dinner with our car salesman. It's just not possible to do. If you want to do what I'm telling you to do, you're either, look, pick a choice, y'all, money or relationships. Type an M or an R. Type an M or an R. While y'all do that, I'm going to share this broadcast. Shout out to the sheriff. And I'm not getting none. I, I asked you guys to inbox me ideas of what we could do for our sharers. What we could do for our sharers. And I need the sharers to inbox me. The people who don't share, nothing against them. You might be new here. Deshaun, I'm not ready to share yet. No problem. Deshaun, I don't have many friends on here. No problem. For the sharers, inbox me. What can we do for y'all? I want to do something every show. For the people who tag a friend, bring a friend, share, because you are the people who help us grow this show. So please inbox me. I don't read DMs because I get too many, but those I will make sure get to me. OK, money. So we see here money is the key. Relationships. I don't need with a car salesman. So you're not looking for someone with, with when when people are bidding for your business. You're not looking for a relationship because there's no loyalty anymore. The loyalty was taken for granted. The loyalty was misused. You have, you have tons of people who have bought three, four, five cars from a person. And when they truly find out that uh, it's time to bid and I have to compete now, uh, you're going to see. So we're not interested in relationships with our car salespeople, banks. No, it's business. If you win the bid, we do business. If not, you get another shot our next car. 
We're not hanging out at barbecues anymore. All right, go ahead, shoot the next one up. A lot of you going to see. You know, some people said, Deshaun, I've been buying from a broker for years, and, uh, you know, I started using this, and I gave my broker a chance to bid, and he said, well, you know, he kind of got offended. He doesn't want to compete. Doesn't want to compete. Deacon, the uh, link to the book is in my TikTok bio. So she so said, where's the, where's the link to the book? In my TikTok bio, 75% off. You get your copy uh, for 30 minutes. So, all right, uh, this one's from YouTube. My credit's excellent. Do you think the rates will go down for used cars this year? I keep seeing 8.49 without getting pre-qualified. Jay, it's a great question. I wish I had a crystal ball. We don't know what rates are going to be. Now, here's you you if you miss the bank bidding war, that's the only way to compete. See, we, we, average rates, we don't want to look at. We, we only want to get bids. And so... If you see the average rate 8.49, that doesn't mean that's what you're going to pay. And we also want to make sure that round one of the bidding war, we're always checking to see if there's any special interest rates on the car we're looking for. If I'm shopping for a Honda Pilot, if I'm shopping for a used one, new, it doesn't matter. Round one of the bidding war, always got to check is there any special interest rates. If there's 0%, if there's 1.99, 2.99, the need to shop rates is done. Okay. So you must check out that first. Uh, and then if those things aren't there, that's when you're going to initiate the bank bidding war to make sure that whatever the lowest rate is in the market, you get it. That's all we can do. All right, go ahead. Shoot the next one up. All right. There's another one from YouTube. Um, is it best to fix up a car before trading it? Oh, you just said a curse word. What's the curse word in this, uh, y'all? Actually, we got it. Who's a first time viewer? Your first time on here, type of one. I'm going to just say, this is a curse word that she just used. It's the T word. We don't use the word trade. We don't use the word trade. Yep, you got it, Adrian. We do not trade. The only time you're going to trade is if you're in a high negative equity position. And once you make that deal and you stay out of negative equity, you're most likely never going to trade again because that means the person wins two bids. We get bids for our old car. You're giving the dealership two transactions. When you're buying a car from them and trading a car, that's two transactions. You're, if you get a loan from them, that's three transactions. So what we do is we go to online buyers who pay cash for cars same day, and that's who we get bids from. Um, and then second, we're going to get bids for our new car we're buying. So you're not usually going to have a dealer who wins the bid for the car you want to buy and then also wins the bid to pay you the most car, mo most for your old car against everyone else. So, uh, but when it comes to getting the car fixed, I always say if it's a, if don't get anything fixed on your car, that's not dramatically increasing the value. You go get a couple nicks touched up. It might cost you six, 700 bucks, but it only increases the value by six, 700 bucks. So that means it was a wash. You only want to get things fixed before you sell the car that dramatically increase the value. OK, that's the rule of thumb. Engines, transmissions, you know, get these things fixed. Rebuild engines, use transmissions, get those things installed, because when without these things, the car becomes worthless. Five hundred bucks. But when you put the you know, I always tell the story of my dad. He his engine went out on his envoy, uh, GMC envoy, maybe five, maybe five years ago, six years ago. He got a rebuilt engine. He got a used engine rather. Uh, he's been driving that vehicle for since, and he's go, he's about to sell it and get something different. So he got another four, he got another five years, and he's going to sell that vehicle. Meanwhile, if the engine had went and he decided to get rid of it, the vehicle was probably worth a thousand dollars at that point. Okay, all right, go ahead. Next question, Dolan. Keep them coming. All right, I like a lot of questions coming in now. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on, Dolan. Let's go. All right. This one's from Instagram. Tried to run my credit when I was buying out my lease, but was able to not let them do it. Okay. Yeah, that's that's fine. Is if you got your own financing, um, I always like to give the dealer a chance to beat the beat the financing. Um, see, that's a defense strategy that they taught you. You know, never let the dealer run your credit. No, we don't want the dealer to be our first offer. Because when the deal is your first offer, here's how it looks. Hey, how much? What's the highest rate you think they'll take? Hey, you think they'll take this rate? Go talk to them. 
when they're trying to beat something you got. Now, that's totally different. Now they're talking to their banks. Now they're picking up the phone. Hey, listen, um, this person has, you know, uh, 6.79 from um, the credit union. Can you, can you, you know, can you beat that? You get what I'm saying? You'll see the difference. Type D if you see the difference in those conversations and the and the way you're positioned if you're out there on the other side. One, the leverage is against you. The second one, you have all the leverage. So that's how you do it. We always want to give the dealers a chance to beat the rate until we get to a point where we're letting lots of banks, where it's set up, where lots of banks and credit unions can compete. Then at that point, the dealers just won't be able to beat that. Because you know, when you got 20, 30, 40 banks that are competing, then you won't need the dealer because that, you know, chances are they're gonna beat it. But most of you, you're, you're gonna, we're gonna shop, you know, our bank, credit union, a couple online people. Maybe we get four, five, six offers. That's not enough. The, the dealers have more banks than that. So you always want to give them a chance. If you do it right, this will take you two days to do this bidding war. And you end up with the lowest interest rate every single time. Guaranteed. That's how you guarantee. See, everything you're doing from now on, I want you to guarantee there's no better offer out there. You get what I'm saying? Guarantee I paid the lowest price for my car. Guarantee I got the most money for my old car. Guarantee I got the lowest interest rate available. And the only way to do that is with bids and multiple offers. All right. Let's go. Keep it going, though. Let's shoot the next one in. Uh, for those of you who just came on, I do these live shows, car car shopping Q and A, to uh, you know to to give you guys the information you need to save all the money you should be saving, and to see the hidden money. Everything that I teach is out out of my new digital book. It's called Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping: Seven Steps to Saving Time, Money, and Avoiding Dealerships. It's a it's a shop from home process. Our mindset, our whole system is called cars from home. So I want you buying cars, saving more money than everyone in 30 minutes, 60 minutes from home. And that's what the book is about. You're not going to spend more than 30 minutes in a car dealership. And for our launch, we're doing seven. You, you got 75 percent off for your copies, normally ninety seven dollars. But you can get your copy for 75 percent off in my TikTok bio, in my Instagram bio, or I'm going to type a uh, type the link for you guys on Facebook and on uh, YouTube. All right, go ahead. Shoot that question up, Dolan. Hold on. Let me put the link here for you guys, and then we'll get it. Come on. Keep typing these questions, y'all, and type them quick. Wait, I don't left out of the screen. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, I almost lost the screen. All right, uh, Instagram. This one's from Instagram. What would you suggest when the dealer tries to run your credit for a test drive? So Oh, we already did that question, Dolan. Let's go. Shoot the next one in. All right. This one's from TikTok. How much to negotiate my new lease? How much to negotiate my new lease? What do you mean by that? You, we, we talked about this. We get bids for leases. So who everyone who's planning the shot and, and and if you are not keeping your car eight years you should be shopping for leases i don't whatever you heard the more you you you, you, you it's been wrong i hate to tell you the bad news but somebody has to tell you the bad news whatever you heard about it who heard never lease a car type the raise your hand emoji or type me if you've heard Never lease a car. If you've heard things like, you know, hall boy advice, like uh, leasing is the most expensive way to own a car. If you've heard this, type me or, or, or okay, I see you, just Elena, uh, a lot of you. Okay, uh, Lewis, that advice has cost anyone who's not keeping their car eight years thousands of dollars, thousands, because it's no comparison when you get great lease deals which means you're not looking at what's advertised. You're not looking like, like look, look at Danielle. So Danielle, Audi lease, $44,000 vehicle. Some of you know every $5,000, 
that the that you borrow is about how much per month? Every five thousand dollars that you borrow, that's a forty-four thousand dollar car. We could just estimate, let's say forty-five. Okay, coconut bread, you got it. Hundred bucks. So every what every time you look at a car, if you just divide it by five thousand, you'll get an idea of how much it should cost per month on a five-year loan. Take to forget the money down. That comes later if you're going to do it. You got to be able to look at a car without putting money into the deal and say, how much would this cost? So $44,000, that's normally about a $900, a $900 payment on that Audi. Danielle's paying $550. Now, if you saw the commercial, are they advertising that deal? $550, come give us $550, drive off in this Audi A3. Absolutely not. Remember what I'm about to say. Great deals that you're going to make will never be advertised. Danielle will look at the Audi A3 commercial and says, wow, it says to get this payment, they needed $4,000 plus tax. All I did was give them $550. So leasing is the way to beat depreciation for people who are not keeping their cars eight years. But you have to get great lease deals. Now, the only way you're going to get great lease deals is you need to get multiple offers because 80% of dealers are overpriced. In the beginning of the show, I talked to you all about uh, the manual way to do it. You can call. You can ask for sales managers. Check out the replay on YouTube because I don't want to go over and repeat that. For those people who have been here, I don't want to go over the same thing. But at the beginning of the show, maybe the first 10 minutes, that was one of the questions of how we're going to get multiple offers. But that's the only way you're going to see how much money is in these overpriced dealers. And if you're shopping correctly and getting multiple offers correctly, you should see a three to five thousand dollar difference between your best offer and the highest offer. It should be three to five thousand minimum. The higher price cars, you see a bigger spread. You see five, seven thousand dollar difference. You know, uh, Kimberly, some of you know Kimberly, she got a Maserati. It was $20,000 she ended up saving. So without multiple offers, you're never going to find out what the bottom price is in the market and be able to get below market deals. So you could do it manual way or you could use my 25 to 5 strategy in my book. OK, but you got to do it. And it's from home. We're not in dealerships doing this. We are literally controlling this from home, getting multiple people to bid and you know you feel like the prize you're gonna now feel like you should i'm the prize now people are competing to win my business as they should go ahead dolan shoot the next one in let me take danielle's picture down put the banner back up for those of you who are on facebook or if you're watching us on the television you can scan that qr code and you can get your book for 75 percent off or you can go to deshaunsbook.com Okay, this one's from YouTube. If we sell the SUV one year lease old to CarMax, how long should we wait to buy for system to show it's paid off? Um, you could get a paid off letter. Um, you get a letter that shows that the car is paid off, even if it's behind the scenes. If you go in and, you know, you can get a payoff letter. That's easy. That's easy to get. You can, you can, when you sell your car to somebody, you can easily get proof that it's been paid off. All right, just ask for it. All right, go ahead. Next one, Dolan. Keep them coming. All right, this one from TikTok. Type your question, y'all. We're getting through as many as we can. What's the best way to go if you're upside down? Great question. So some of you are going to do the equity assessment process, and you're going to find out you owe more money on your car than it's worth. Um, in fact... There's a big ep epidemic that they say is already here that if some of you have been following me on TikTok since I came to 2021, I was literally shouting from the hills to not buy these overpriced cars because the market was going to drop in two years. And I said 2024, people are going to look up and they're going to have cars that are 15000 in negative equity. And, um, and some of you said, Yo, I'm gonna hold off. You, 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 you heeded the warnings, or you used the strategies we were teaching back then because I 
I knew some people needed cars. So we were teaching strategies on how to get multiple offers from back then. So um, now th there's three, there's two situ there's two solutions for those of you who find yourself in a negative equity position, if you want a car, two solutions. One of them, um, there's actually three solutions that I talk about, but one of them doesn't lead to a car. That's why I call negative equity the devil to your car deals. It's the bad credit for people with good credit. Because in that third solution, in that third scenario, you cannot get a car at this particular time. But let's talk about the first two. First is you get your offers from the online buyers who pay the most. Get the bids, CarMax, Driveway, Carvana, Kelly's Blue Book, Instant Cash Offer, Car Guru, Sell My Car, AutoNation, Sell My Car. Get those six offers. If the negative equity is something you can cover the difference, I owe 20. My highest offer is 18. That means in that in that situation, you have 2,000 of negative equity. You're much better off paying the 2,000 all day long and close, pay the difference because those bids are going to be your highest bids. So that's going to lead to the least amount of negative equity. Depending on where you do your transaction, your negative equity amount will change. So if you're going this route and you can pay the difference, that's your best route because they pay the most, meaning you'll have the least amount of negative equity working that scenario. Now, some of you are going to see you can't pay the difference. That means you must trade. This is the only instance where we trade because you must trade because you need the dealer who wins the bid for your car to actually roll your negative equity into that deal. So whatever the vehicle is worth to them, after you make your off, after you get your bids, after you identify them, you must identify the winning dealer first. If you try to do this with an 80%, you're going to get killed and just you're, 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 you're leaving thousands and thousands of dollars on the table and just, you know, being lazy, unfortunately. But if you now say, all right, I'm getting the bids now because I can't pay the difference. Whoever wins the bid of your multiple offers, you're now going to go to them and say, or, you know, we do this from home. Hey, I have a car. Could you tell me what it's worth to you? I was getting offers online. But if I could do it all in one transaction, then I'd do it with you. You don't need to tell them what you owe. The only thing that's important is what they can pay. Now, when they come back, they might say, listen, I could max give you about 16.5 for it. Now, you might have known CarMax was going to pay you 18. And you would have had 2,000 of negative equity. But with them, 16.5, you have 3,500 of negative equity. There's nothing you can do. Because they can't pay what the highest bidder is going to pay. It's just not possible. That means they're winning both bids. It's not possible. So you're ha you have to take the highest offer they can give, and whatever that negative equity ends up being is now going to go into your deal, and that's, that's the way you do it. So you have less control, which is why I tell you, don't just know how to get out of negative equity. Know what's causing it. And what's causing it is you, you, you don't lease. That's what's causing it. You can queue up the next question. We'll get to that right now, Dolan. That's the cause. You don't lease. You buy cars. You're not a short. You're not a long-term owner. Long-term owners, you know, um, who who's who. Type K. If you got a keeper outside, we call those keepers. Car has been outside eight plus years, nine, ten. You can type the number of years it's been. I not type the number of years you've had your car, and I want to give the people who are not in the habit of being keepers or buying cars that, that are going to be keepers, I want to give them a clear look at what a true keeper is. Not, not two. I'm, I'm, if you're, if it's just not, if it's less than eight, you don't need, you don't need to comment right now. I'm telling you, this is how you, this is for the, if you're not looking to get to this level, because what, what the benefit of this level this is the purpose for buying a car, because some of you know, I talk about the depreciation curve. The depreciation curve is like this. From the day you buy your car, the vehicle's dropping in value massively. But about it starts to do like this the more you keep it. So it's losing less value year by year. 
Those of you who are typing eight years, look, somebody said 19 years. Look, you have the benefit of losing little to no, losing very little value every year. The same price your car is worth now is about the same price it'll be worth a year from now. That means you've won, you've outlived the depreciation. Look, look, Vince said, I got a 20, I got a 2004 F-150, 20 years old. So you've beat the depreciation through long term. Notice this has nothing to do with how you paid for the car. Oh, Deshaun, I pay cash for my car. It doesn't matter. Won't change the curve. So how you beat the curve is through long-term ownership, eight plus years, or aggressive lease deals for short-term people. That's it. Those of you who are stuck in this middle and you're replacing your cars here, three, four, five, six years, and you're not leasing, you're losing so much money. And unless you pay cash for cars, you're still losing it, but you're in a negative situation. You're in a negative equity situation many times. So you should be transferring your negative equity to a lease. All right. Unless you're in an emergency situation where you're just switching cars and you're going to keep the next car eight years. But most 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 of you are not. All right. Go ahead, uh, Dolan. Shoot the next one up. This one's YouTube. How does your lease program work with electric vehicles like Rivian and Lucid? Those cars seem to be sold differently than normal dealerships. OK. Any dealer. All right. Tesla's. Anything, it's not about electric. It's about is the car sold direct with no negotiation, one price, which is Tesla's model. What is our goal of getting bids for cars we're buying? Everyone, and if you haven't been here before, you got to stay close to your keyboard because I don't talk at you. I'm having a conversation, which means if I ask you a question, I need you to type an answer. What is our goal? when we're getting bids. What's the reason we're doing this? Let's see who could cut, like, see, let's see the best answer. I wanna, I wanna see some answers. Let me go on my phone so I can see Instagram. I know uh, we got Dolan bringing in questions, but let me go on my phone. What is our goal? No, 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 don't shoot the next question up yet, Dolan. I'm, I'm asking. Comparison, yep, yep. To get the best deal, yep, okay. Show me the money, best offer, comparison, best offer, lowest deal. Lowest deal, price assurance, yes, James, I love that. That's the goal, price assurance. That means there's no way I could have paid less for this car. That's what you only get by bids. Now, if they have no way to adjust the price, which Tesla doesn't, it's one price then there's no reason to get bids on that part of the purchase. There's no reason to get bids. So that part is eliminated. The bank bidding war isn't. Making sure you that if they have a bad lease program over 1.5% with no money down, that's not eliminated. But when it comes to shopping prices, that's eliminated. So depending on the electric vehicle, if it's a one price model, everywhere in the country sells it for one price, then you don't get bids for that. But if it's an electric vehicle like anything else, then absolutely bids, always bids. And the process doesn't change. You could be getting a Rolls Royce. What about if I'm a luxury car, an exotic car, Lamborghini? Does not matter. In fact, it's more important when you see how much money you save getting bids on those cars because it's such a difference. All right, go ahead, Dolan. Shoot the next one up, brother. All right. Instagram. This one's from Instagram. What's a good amount to negotiate on a used car? I heard 15 to 20% off the price is max. Nope, not at all. There's just no, there's no way. If All right, give you an example. There's two types of dealers that sell used cars. One, one dealer marks the price up high and prepares to negotiate with the public. Another dealer maybe leaves themselves $1,500 and they want to sell cars like volume. They want the cars going in two, three days, gone. You're not going to negotiate with the one dealer the same way you're going to negotiate with the other dealer, which is why when we shop for used cars, we're looking at the entire market at home and then we're going to make the best. We're going to make. We're going to we're going to find and identify our car from home based on something I call the true value percentage. The true value percentage is not what the dealer is discounting the used, used car. The true value percentage is how much am I saving from the original new price? I always use my 
uh, Infinity truck I got, for an example, all the vehicles that I was looking at, they were all between 30 and 32. I had narrowed it down to four. They're all similar. They're all the same color. Online, they seemingly all look the same. Size a little difference. I saw one of them had these different rims on it. But and if if that's all I know, then I'm going to, uh, it's hard for me to decide, right? But we know more than that. And you're going to know more than that. When we get the new price, I saw that one of the cars was brand new, 46. One was 48. One was 52. And the one I ended up getting was 54.5. Now that's the discount that I'm measuring. That's called the true value percentage. And, and you don't have to Google that. You won't find it because I made it up. The true value percentage means what is the percentage I'm saving from the new price? The marketplaces can't show you this because the true value percentage the one I got was 42% off the new price. If they showed you this, then that means the cars that offer the lowest true value percentage wouldn't even appear on their site. They never sell. You never see when a person says 1% true value discount, that means the brand, you know, the car was brand new 40 and they're asking 39.5 for it. No one's going to buy that. So what they're going to do is try to show you things like good deal, good, uh, great deal based on their algorithms and their market value because they're not there to make their people compete. They're there to help all those cars sell. So when you do the true value percentage, that's the only thing that matters and really when you're when you're when you're looking at a used car. Outside of making sure it's a good car. There's a process for making sure it's a good car. Title, service records, accident histories, but once we get into the numbers, it's about the true value percentage. That's all it's about. All right, go ahead. Next one, Dolan. Keep them coming, y'all. Type your questions fast. All right. And shout out to everybody that shared. If you just jumped on, uh, these lives are part of, you know, I guess I would say they're sponsored by my new digital book, Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping, Seven Steps to Saving Time, Money, and Avoiding Dealerships. So it's a totally online process. 90 to 100% of our new car purchase is done from home. 90% of our used car purchase is done from home. You can't do 100%. Why can't we do 100% on used cars? 90 to 100% on new cars and leases? Absolutely. Sometimes 100% because they can deliver the car to you. Why can't we do 100% of our transaction on a used car from home? Does anybody know? Let's see. I'm gonna give it five seconds, and then I and then I'll tell everybody. Got a test drive. Exactly. Great job. Great job, Stephanie. That's the reason. And the test drive is always the last step with a used car, because everything you should never be going to see a used car, not guaranteeing that it's the lowest price used car in the market. You found that online. You verified there's no bogus fees. That's the we do that before we leave. And the only thing I'm going to do there is test drive and lock the deal up. What I do, what I do is I'll ask for, you know, $500 to $1,000 off when I get there because you have leverage. But you always know, even if I don't get it, because I just told you how the best dealers work. They're not leaving their, They're not leaving thousands of dollars in room there. It's already the best price in the market. And they know that because there's a tool called B Auto that dealers use when they price their cars, it shows them where their car ranks among all other cars in the nation if they want, zip code, city. So they know this car is the best price in the market. So when you get there, yeah, I might ask for 750, a thousand. And he might say, look, I put it all out there. I'll give you another 200 bucks, that's all. Now we know they're telling the truth because we are researched. When you're not researched and they tell you that, yo, man, he just don't want a deal. No, you don't know a deal. And that's a big difference. But that's why we can't do 100% of our used car transactions from home. All right, go, uh, Dolan, go ahead. Shoot that next one up. 
Great questions today. Everybody getting value out of the show? If you're getting value, type dollar signs if you're getting value out of the show. Go ahead. This one's from Instagram. Can you trade in your car? Man, man, y'all in these curse words. We don't trade. We don't trade. Check out the replay. You might have just jumped on uh, Isaiah. We don't trade. We get bids. And uh, and again, I don't want to repeat that for the people who've been on the show for the whole, you know, I think we've been on for about 45 minutes, but uh, we do not trade. And yes, you should be. You, in fact, a lot of what you're what you're asking, we hit on. So check check out Facebook. Watch the first, you know, 20 minutes. Uh, check out YouTube. The replays up there, and uh, and that question will be answered for you. All right, go ahead. This one's from TikTok. It's 2.9 a good lease deal? Absolutely not. If you're basing it off of my formula, which is based on the one percent rule and 1.5 being the highest offer. That looks more like a great interest rate than a group. That's a horrible lease deal. I don't even know how you're calculating it, but if you're calculating it based on dividing the monthly payment into the MSRP and it's 2.9%, it's probably one of the worst lease deals I've ever seen. All right, uh, this one's from YouTube. How do you find a reliable used car? One of the steps that we take to make sure we're getting a good car is we do a five minute process. Uh, this is in step four. My book is based on seven steps. My system, everything I'm teaching you is based on seven steps. So some part of what I'm telling you is based on a step. This comes out of our shopping step, which is deciding what we want. We take five minutes, we type in the year make model of the vehicle, and there's two terms that you need to remember. Three, if you're buying long-term, First is you type in the year, make and model, initial quality. You, and that's going to tell you what people are saying about the car the first 90 days. Initial quality is first 90 days. You're going to skim the first page of Google. If you see anything, you're going to see articles. You're going to skim anything that looks like a red flag, you know, owners report, you know, electric issues or anything. Once you skim that, now you're going to type you're going to replace initial quality with reliability. Now, reliability is what people are saying the first three years. We don't listen to people, their opinion on cars. There's too many cars out here and they're, they're, people don't have the data on cars. Your neighbor, I always say your neighbor is not the data. Hey, Jim, man, I see you got the. See, you got the key to tell you, Rob, man. Hey, how you like it? Is it, is it a good car? Well, there's 10,000 key to tell you, Rob, that have been sold. And he only knows about his. His might be a good one. 5%, 10% of the owners might be reporting that there's issues. So you want to go where the data is. And that's how you do This is how you do it. You're going to type in it, reliability. And so any of you who are going to be leasing and buying a, or buying a brand new car, you should be doing that step. Take your five minutes, skim the first articles, reliability, initial quality. Now, if you're buying a car long term and you're keeping it eight plus years, then you should be typing in longevity. And that's going to skip. That's going to bring up. Sometimes it'll tell you right at the top. These cars are known to last 200 to 300,000 miles. Oh, owners report transmission problems along uh, around 80,000 miles. If you haven't done this and you buy a used version of the car at 65,000 miles, and then two years later, the transmission starts slipping, it's not because you, uh, you couldn't have avoided this. This is how you avoid those issues. And again, there's no guarantees. But when you follow the data, oh, that's a red flag. I'm not getting a 65,000 mile one if I see that they report transmission issues at 80,000 miles. And this is what we call a quality, um, uh, this is a reliability and initial quality of longevity check. That's how we make sure we're buying a reliable used car. And the rest is making sure you're doing title, service records, accident history. You take all those steps. See, what I'm giving you is boundaries. You can choose to step over the boundaries if you want, but at least you know there that there's boundaries now. You get what I'm saying? 
if you don't know you're breaking the law, then is are you breaking the law? I'm going 70 miles an hour. There was no sign. I didn't know. Once the sign is there and I'm going 80, now I, I know that I'm stepping over a boundary. And I know I'm taking more risk. All right. Go ahead, Dolan. Shoot the next one up. Good questions. Good questions. Good questions. Everybody, if you're like Deshaun, this is too much to remember. It's all in my new digital book, Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping, Seven Steps to Saving Time, Money, and Avoiding Dealerships. I'm going to put the link for you guys to get your copy at 75% off as part of our launch. It's normally $97. You got 30 minutes. Once that timer hits zero, it's going back to $97. So get, your, get yours for $24. It'll be in your inbox in minutes and you can be using this and you don't have to try to remember all of this stuff anymore. Um, but either way, you get it how you want it. You want to get it from the shows. You want to get it from my videos. But I think a lot of you can see that there's a, although a lot of you are in the same situation, there's different situations. So if you want, I just need how I'm going to lease. That's in my book step by step. How I'm going to buy my used car. That's in my book step by step. So you get in where you fit in. All right, this one's from TikTok. I did your calculation and it came out below 1.5. Thank you, Lauren. I love your advice. Thank you. And look, 1.5 should be the lowest of all your offers. The goal is not to get a lease under 1.5 because here's the, here's the, that's one goal, but only if I told you it should be a three to $5,000 difference in your offers. So if you have offers and one of them is 1.6, one's 1.7, one's 1.8, and then the lowest is 1.5, that's a win. If you get one offer and he gets it to under 1.5, because some people are watching us and they're depending on people who want a shortcut uh, already short process. If you're using what I'm teaching, this takes you 90 minutes. You should be able to get car deals in 90 minutes or less if you're using what I'm teaching. What car sales people who are the 80%, they're very wise in what they do. So they're going to look for people who come in and talk about 1.5%. And if they know they have the programs, they'll get you under 1.5%, even though their competitors could have got you 1.3%. So 1.5 is always the goal when you're shopping to not overpay. But the only time 1.5 is the best offer is when every single other offer that we have is above that. Does that make sense? Type clear if you're clear on that. You don't go in with the goal of 1.5. You go in with the goal to get the best offer in the market and see what it is. If Let's take somebody like um, let's take somebody like Bonita. Bonita, middle of the pandemic, she got a she got a Telluride. When people were paying five, 10 grand over sticker for Telluride, she leased one forty six, forty eight thousand dollar vehicle. She gave him six hundred bucks and she drove off. That was her best offer she got from home. Six hundred dollars into forty eight thousand, she got a one point two five lease. I think it might have been forty six thousand. It was, it was middle of the pandemic. See, I'm showing you that we've been getting deals below market deals since the pandemic. For those of you who are going to use strategy, you're going to see lots of deals. For those who are not, it's going to seem like there's no deals anywhere. So $646,000, yep, 1.3. Now, if she had went in with a goal of 1.5, she would have never gotten 1.3. So you you don't dictate, we never dictate where we where we need the bottom to be. We're going to shop offers wherever the bottom is, as long as it's under 1.5 and we have a spread of offers, now we're winning. All right? Go ahead, Dolan, shoot the next one up. All right, I'm trying to get through these last couple fast as possible, all right? Y'all know we're on a time limit. I would love to do these shows forever. But we keep these going. So even if you don't see, you know, whenever you see one, hop on because 
even if someone's usually going to ask a question similar to yours, if not the same question. Go ahead. All right. This one's Instagram. I'm looking to buy a used Toyota 2022 or 2023 Camry XSE, but it seems like it's a low inventory of them. What do I do if there's a low inventory? I'm looking everywhere. Where they could. First of all, let's, let, let me explain something. Those of you who are looking for a used one or two year old car, it's going to be hard because the only two ways dealerships get used cars is they buy them off lease. The average lease is three years. So you're not going to usually see a one or two year old one. Or the second way is if they buy them from someone, which means someone has to be in a Toyota Camry and decide in one year, all right, I'm ready to replace this. Or I'm in a Toyota two years, I'm ready to replace this. That's not usually going to happen. That's why you're usually not going to see used cars in bulk until the third year when they start to come off lease. Now you start to see more inventory. So I would tell you to, you know, shop wider. But before I buy a 23, you see, you, you don't have anything to compare it to because there's not enough inventory. I would always shop the market for a new one first. Shop the market for a new one first. See what the best offer is. You might see that you can save 4000 or 3000 on a new one. Now, in order for me to buy, now that sets the market for the used ones. If I don't know what the best offer is, like, like if somebody was buying a one-year-old Jeep Grand Cherokee, well, it's a $45,000 vehicle. They might go and say, well, I'm looking for a one-year-old one for 39 or 38. That's a problem because depending on the new Jeep deals, you might be able to get a brand new one. 45, you might be able to get that for 39. So if you go out and look for a one or two year old one, but you don't know what the new market is, if the new market's distressed, you end up paying close to what a new one would be for your used one. So if anybody, this is only for those of you who are like, I want to buy a one or two year old used car, not three, not four, not five, one or two. You should be shopping the new market and then seeing where the market is and then let that be the gauge on how much you're looking to save on a one or two year old. All right. Makes sense. OK, go ahead. Shoot the next one up, Dolan. Um, listen, tell tell that. Listen, we get a lot of these people come on late. He said, oh, what's your what's your thoughts on an Audi Q8? Uh, I, we already answered that. We don't get people's opinions on cars. It's subjective. We're going to where the data is. Watch the replay. We, we went over this about 15 minutes ago because it, we, we, uh, opinions are subjective. I could love the Audi Q8 and then it's a horrible car. The data shows it's not a good car or that specific year is not a good one. So just check the replay out and uh, you know check it out. We, told, we talked about that about 15 minutes ago. This one's from TikTok. I have a question. Do dealerships pad the interest rate from the bank? Yes. If they can, yeah. If they're trying to beat your offer, they probably don't have room to pad the interest rate. So you should be looking at the bank bidding. Well, see, this is what I said. You see, many of you should be watching the replays. If you came on late, somebody's going to ask you a question. So go to YouTube, go to Facebook, watch the replay, because a lot of these questions we went over in the show because many of you are in the same situation as each other. All right, go ahead. Next one, Dolan. My transmission is starting to go out on a, my paid off vehicle. Should I get the car fixed or a new car? Depends on your, your values. If your goal is this, about 20 minutes ago, I asked where the keepers were. That means I'm keeping my car as long as possible. I'm outside the depreciation curve. My, my vehicle is losing little value every year and I'm keeping it as long as possible. The longer I keep it, the more valuable the vehicle is to me. Then you go get a used transmission. I talked about my dad's engine going a couple years ago. He went and got a rebuilt engine, used engine rather. He's had that car for another five or six years. The value, the replacement cost. Don't consider what it costs you to get the transmission. That might be, and make sure you have a great mechanic, use a, a service shop locally that you trust, that you can depend on. Ask around on social media who's been here 10, 15, 20 years. Everybody loves them, trustworthy. That's who you want to deal with. See if they get you a used transmission, transmission from a salvage yard, because you're not going to consider that cost. You're comparing that to the cost of replacement. The cost of replacement might mean what's coming. All right, $2,500 to put in a used transmission or 
a new car payment coming out of my house because I'm I'm starting a whole nother car. So it depends on your values. Going for more value out of that car. <laughs> Most keepers would say if their their goal is a keeper, I'm doing it. I'm getting another transmission in the car. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so you get what I'm saying? All right. All right, y'all. We just hit the hour. Um, the, the, what would the best monthly payment be? See, that's a that's a it's a good question because I know it's something you sincerely want to know, but it's a question that you're not going to be asking monthly payments once you start really understanding the numbers because if you're buying a car, then you're looking at you're looking at the fact every five thousand dollars is about a hundred bucks a month. So on a sixty thousand dollar car, monthly payment would be eleven hundred a month for five years. But your question shouldn't be what is a good monthly payment. It's what is how do we know sixty thousand was the best price for the car? You get what I'm saying? We're not concerned with what the monthly payment is at first. We're concerned with is sixty thousand the lowest whatever car you're gonna put there. Use BMW X5, whatever, is 60000 the best price for the car? Because payments will mask the actual price you're paying for the car if you don't understand what I'm talking about. You come in, hey, uh, I like that car. You know what? What's the payments like on that? Well, it's normally 1200 Oh, man, shoot. Boy, that's high. Anywhere I could get it down to like nine fifty. Well, how much could you put down? I could probably put down like you know maybe ten. You lost already. You're negotiating from strength based on you're you're negotiating off from weakness based on payments, which means you're not looking at the price of the car. You're talking numbers in the dealership, and so that's not the goal. Step back. We are getting bids. When you separate your transaction into three transactions max, who I sell my car to is one transaction. Who I get my loan from, another transaction. Who I buy my car from, another transaction. And every single one of them is going to be a bidding process. When you step back and that's how you roll, you'll never ask what should monthly payments be on that. Because the bank works out the monthly payments. And then, you know, we have the budgeting tool, the perfect budget. Everyone who has my book, if you got your copy for 75% off, in day three is a tool that I created called the perfect budget. Perfect budget calculator. You put in numbers. This is how much I possibly could put down. This is where I want my monthly payment. This is what state I'm in. It tells you multiple goals. You can't pay more than this for a car. This is where you start. Look for a car here. Goal one, look for a car at this price. If you can't, jump up here. If you can't, look up here. If you can't, jump up here. But once you get here, you cannot pay more than this price for a car before you are over your budget. So grab the book. I'll release it. I'm just trying to see how we're going to release it um, because without people understanding how to use it, then it's going to be pretty much worthless to you. So, but for those of you who have the book and you've had it, you, if you got into step three in the process, you see the perfect budget calculator. And, um, you know, we, we are, we're not depending on doing it. And this is one of the videos that really brought me to the world. I went on the tick, I went on TikTok, my first video ever. Uh, and I said, the worst thing you could say in a car dealership, the worst thing is just get me to this payment and we have a deal. That vi That video resonated with, millions of people thank god and uh it's been seen over 26 million times and since then it's been about explaining why payments can be manipulated we do not shop based on payments we need to understand the numbers and so i do my best to try to help you guys understand the numbers but if you're getting bids you ain't gonna lose you cannot lose getting bids the only way you can lose is if you're negotiating one-to-one -one. that's when you lose you can't win just like you can't lose getting bids you can't win one-on-one -on -one negotiating, all right? So, all right, y'all, we just hit the hour mark. Absolutely great. Um, we will be back. Uh, whenever you see me live, you know, uh, jump on, 
catch the questions. And if you want everything I teach in one spot, my new digital book, Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping, is officially out. It's a seven-step process. Everything from leasing to buying used cars, new cars, the bank bidding, it's all a seven-step process. So I don't want you having to overthink. I don't want your ideas. I want your goal. You come with the goal, I'll give you the strategy. And so uh, grab your copy for 75% off in my TikTok bio or in my Instagram bio. There's a website in both. And then for you guys here on Facebook and YouTube, I'm going to throw the link up for you guys one more time. You could do Deshaun'sBook.com. Or if you're watching us on TV, just scan the QR code with your, with your mobile phone. Grab your copy for 75% off. It's a digital book. Anything changes in the market, like Room went out of business a couple months ago, I just update the book. That's the beautiful thing about a digital book is when something changes, I update the master file and you open up the book and it's relevant. A year from now, you open it up, whatever changes, the master file will be changed. And so you'll be able to always have a relevant book. And we couldn't do that if we were printing books. So um, enjoy, guys. It was a great show. Got a lot of great questions and uh, I will see you on the next one. And DM me about these sharers, y'all. Sharers, DM me. Let me know what we can do to reward the sharers because I appreciate you all inviting people. We can't do it without you. All right. I'll see y'all next time. God bless. In fact, hit that. Yep. Can I sell my lease early? We're live on all four platforms and we're going to start with this question. Great question. Some of you have leases that you're in right now and you want to know, can I get out of it early? Now, normally the answer is no, you can't get out early because you're breaking the contract. But in the case of selling your lease, you can get out. And if you can sell it and break even, you can get out without penalty. If you can sell it and make a profit, even better, but don't bank on that. So what you want to do is look at your, do your equity assessment. Because some people, if you didn't know you could sell a lease, type me in the comments. So you might be looking at this question we got on TikTok and say, dang, I didn't even know we could sell a lease. So if you did not know you could sell a lease, type me, type a question mark, because this is new information to some of you. So the way you're selling a lease is, see, you have an option to buy. It's good to see you, Marvin. And you also have an option to sell. We very rarely, almost never, ex exercise our option to buy a lease. Almost never. But we usually always exercise our option to sell. And so the way we're going to do this is we need to see what is the market value. Now, I never want you to use algorithms to find out the market value of our vehicles. I want you to get bids because the benefit of, of cars over houses is you can get cash offers from people who will pay you cash for your car, no obligation to take those offers. So that means you can actually see what people will pay for your car. And the people I'm about to list pay the most money for cars. You're going to get six bids, take you about 20 minutes while you sit at home. And that's going to tell you the market value of your car. So the first thing you're going to do is call your bank. You're going to get your payoff. Don't look at your contract. Don't look at the residual value. That's not important. What's important is your payoff. So you're going to call the leasing company, ask for your payoff. And the second question you're going to ask is what is or is, is do I have a third party restriction? Both of those people can sell no matter what answer you get. But if you have a third party restriction, it restricts who you can sell to. So as soon as you hang up that call, you're now going to go to CarMax.com, Driveway.com, uh, AutoNation, Sell My Car, uh, Carvana, um, Kelly's Blue Book Instant Cash Offer, and Car Guru Sell My Car. That's going to get you six offers in 20 minutes. Every one of those sites, if it asks you, is the car owned, leased, or financed, you're going to put owned. Once you see what those offers are, you're going to know what the market value is. You'll be able to see if you can break even, you can possibly get out. If you're, if you can, now, if you have no third party restriction, you can sell to them. If you break even, you can get out. But for those of you who have a third party restriction, and some leasing companies do not, Chase, 
uh, Toyota, there's a few leasing companies out there with no third party restriction. I still think what they did is illegal. Maybe we'll find out. Uh, uh, maybe there'll be a class action lawsuit because we still don't understand how they changed thousands. In fact, probably, you know, millions of leasing contracts, mid contract. Uh, we need to know whether those third party restriction clauses in there from the start or did they somehow get in there when they saw people selling their leases, making money? We need to know that. That's another story for another day. But if you don't have a third party restriction and you can sell to them, break even, you're out of the lease anytime you want. If you have a third party restriction, you're going to use those offers. And now you're going to say, because I'm rest restriction mean you have to sell to a dealership of the same brand. That's what a third party restriction is. You must say, if you have a Nissan, you must sell to a Nissan dealership. You, if you that Here's what it doesn't mean. You're going to sell to one dealership. Here's another thing it doesn't mean. All dealerships are going to make you the same offer for that Nissan. So if you go into that one Nissan dealer and say, well, I can only work with you, uh, then you're going to leave money on the table. And part of understanding how this works is, not, is to understand that every dealer is, is different. Some of you may think, you may think, oh, I thought every Nissan dealer was the same. I thought they were like all one. No, they're not. They're all different. And that's how we win because we get bids and we put these people against each other. So that is the steps you would take to see if you can sell your lease early. And uh, and that's called the equity assessment. That's step two in my process. My process for you is seven steps. So everything I'm going to answer today is going to be based on one of the seven steps in my process, which is about getting bids and car shopping from home and doing 90 to sometimes 100% of your transaction from home. And so uh, that's all in my new book, digital book, car shopping for people who hate, hate car shopping. You can cue the next question up, uh, Dolan, shoot the next one in. We're bringing questions from everywhere. I'll manually read the questions on Facebook because we were having some trouble going live on Facebook. But uh, you can all get uh, a copy of my new book, Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping. It's a digital book and it's 75 percent off while you're on here. It's a 30 minutes. You can get it for 75 percent off. It's normally ninety seven dollars. You can get it for 24 for 30 minutes. All right, go ahead, Dolan, shoot it up. All right, keep the questions coming, y'all. We're going to try to get through as many as we can in an hour. This one's from Instagram. My lease is up, but my credit score went down. How can I get another lease with the same company? All right, great question. Mercedes was big on forgiving people if they made their car payments on time. There were so many times someone would come in and they would say, Deshaun, you know what? Credit score went down. I said, well, how'd you pay the Mercedes? Oh, great. Never missed a payment on the car. 99 times out of 100, you're getting approved from Mercedes. Many people are like that because not many things. Could y'all keep tapping the screen, run the likes up on TikTok? I appreciate y'all. Um, many times, a bank, besides your credit score, probably the second indicator for a bank of if you're going to pay is if you've paid your car. So I've, you, your credit cards could be behind. It could be kind of... You know, if you got a good history with your car, uh, you got a good history of getting getting approved. Now, the second thing is if you missed a couple payments on the car, um, I would still take the shot uh, because in this economy, people realize, you know, over the last couple of months, as long as you're not trying to go up in payment, I take a shot. If you're going from a five hundred dollar payment and you're, you know, staying there or going lower, then I take the shot for sure. If you're going from five to seven and you've missed payments, that's going to be tough. So I would try to be, uh, and if you don't need a car right now, you're leasing. Now, here's what you do. Uh, love. Be, first of all, all of you should be following Shonda Martin. Can somebody type her name? Because I know somebody on here follows her. Um, she's on every platform. Her, uh, her brand is Road to 750 Plus. So, you, if, so here's what you do. Call and extend your lease. Um, most leasing companies will give you a free extension. Shout out to y'all running the likes up on TikTok. Uh, appreciate y'all tapping the screen. Call and get a free extension for two reasons. One, it'll buy you some time. Get with Sean to see if you can raise your credit score. Two, if you don't have, um, you might, you, you, if it'll buy you some time. It's just, I don't like shopping with our backs against the wall. Unless your car got stolen, car got totaled, we don't like to shop in emergency situations. We can, we still win. You use what I'm telling you, start getting bids. You can get your best offer in three or four days. 
So don't worry about that. My book will teach you how and everything you'll learn from me is if I need a car in three, four days to shine, what do I do? Get bids, get the lowest offer in the market. But if you have the luxury of time, that benefits you. The luxury of time when shopping is a benefit. So um, so see if you can get that extension and then um, and then go for it. Try to keep your lease with shop bids and, and you might be able to lower your payment because many of you, I haven't made a video about this yet, but I want to tell you all this before we go to the next question. Many of you overpaid in 2020, 2021 for your leases. So you're going to be surprised when you use these strategies. Some of you are going to get the same version of the car that you have now, and you're going to drop your payment 150, 200 bucks. And I want you to know this before you start getting the calls from the salespeople who are going to try to keep you in that car or upgrade you and keep your payment around the same. Many people, you're getting those calls. Who's getting those calls right now? Hey, Jim, uh, your lease is not up for another six months, but what if I could get you in a new version, keep your payment around the same? That's always the entry point. And they're listening. No, 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 no way, man. I want to drop my payment. That's not enough, though. By how much? You get what I'm saying? So when you get bids, some of you are going to see, Dag, I was paying $700. i am getting bids now. And I'm I'm getting a similar car for 500, 550. All right, shoot the next question up, uh, Dolan, and uh, we'll take one from Facebook because I I know we still can't access Facebook. So let's uh, I'll do these questions manually. This one's from TikTok. Need help? My wife just totaled our car, and now I need help on how to properly go about getting a car. That's very broad. First thing you're going to ask yourself. I want everybody to answer this. How many years are you keeping your next car? This is the most important question. You're going to hear me say that when you hear and when you're talking to somebody, once you learn these and once you use these to get deals, your first question is also what I call the most important question, which is how many years are you keeping the car? So let's see. Let's see some answers. How many years are you keeping in? The, and let's not let's be intentional, not vague, not as long as I can until like literally how many years what's the goal okay at least five um eight okay uh five okay um keeping the car for five okay so i'm seeing a lot of fives i see marion 10 okay if you're not keeping your car eight years or longer then you should be leasing. It's not even a question. Now, whatever that triggered in you based on your experience, if you're like Deshaun, I heard you should never lease. We're going to explain to you uh, how bad of uh, information that was. Very bad information. And you're overpaying for short-term depreciation. So the first question you're going to ask is, how many years am I keeping my car? Because if you, there is no way I can teach you to get the lowest price in the market on a used car if you want, on a brand new car if you want, on a lease. No problem. We've been doing that for three years, thousands of people. That's no problem. If you buy when you should have leased, there's no way for you to get a great deal. It's over. I use um, I use Danielle as an example. Matter of fact, we did Danielle. Let's go to Tope. I use Tope as an example. Fifty-four thousand dollar BMW. She's paying six ninety a month. Some of you know, every five thousand dollars on a car per, uh, purchase is hundred bucks a month. So when you're looking at a fifty-four thousand, let's say fifty-five thousand dollar car, that's a that's an eleven hundred dollar a month payment for five years. She's paying six ninety. Even if a, even if you went in, this is why if you lease, if you buy when you should have leased, then you lost. Even if a person went in and got them to knock ten thousand dollars off the price of that new BMW, and they got out of there for forty five thousand taxes, they're going to be probably forty eight, almost fifty. They're still at nine fifty, nine seventy five a month. She's paying six ninety. If they bought a used version of this vehicle instead of 54, maybe they find a nice used one for let's say 35,000. 
35,000 taxes put you about 38. You're looking at about seven, six, 690, almost seven. I, I'm sorry, 35, 38. Every 5,000 is 100 bucks. You're looking at about seven, 750. She's paying 690. And a used BMW with almost what, one year left of the warranty, it's no way the quality of what they're driving is the same. Now, when does the person who bought wins? Because in the short term, Tope's paying six ninety. The person who bought a brand new one's paying a thousand. The person who bought a three year old used one is paying seven fifty. She's killing all of them. She's killing both of them by far. Keeping a lot of money in her pocket. She's nothing going wrong with the car. Anything breaks, she comes, drops it to the dealership. She got a brand new car, full warranty. There's no way to get a great deal when you purchase, but you should have leased. And she knows how to get great lease deals. She gets bids. So don't think, because some of you might say, Deshaun, well, that doesn't look like the deal I saw on the commercial. That's because commercials are not deals. Scrap that. You're never going to see a great deal on a commercial. Never. De great deals are when the dealership barely wants to make them. They don't even want anyone to know about them. They just, so, oh, you know, I, I've in the past when I was at Mercedes, I had to tell some people, listen, please, I'd love for you to send me your friends and family, but don't tell them what you're paying because I probably can't duplicate that. When somebody got a great deal, we weren't telling them, you know, go tell your friends and family, we'll give them the same deal. If they're telling you, I'll give your friends and family the same deal, that means it wasn't a great deal. Sorry to tell you, if you were able to match, dealerships don't like doing deals like this, and they certainly don't want to do multiple, you know, many of them. So, that's why your foundation, your most important question, it's step one in my book. It's step one whenever you're, you're, you know, you'll hear me talk is how many years am I keeping the car? If you're not keeping the car eight, then you're paying ridiculous depreciation. Your car's value is here. And, you you know, around eight years, it starts to cool. Six, seven years, it's going to start to level out a little bit. You lose less value. And if you're not keeping, if you're switching your cars here, buying them here, and then you're trading them out anywhere between here. You're losing tons of money. We call that the unseen expense depreciation. That's why the unseen expense. You buy a car today for 30. What is it worth 30 tomorrow? Yes or no? It's the unseen expense. You buy a car today for 30,000. Is it worth 30 tomorrow? Yes or no? Exactly. Gonzalez, you can't hear. Everyone else can hear. So I don't know what's up with your audio. So that's what you, everything we do from now on, I'm, I, my job is to teach you how to get the lowest prices in the market. And it's also to teach you where the hidden money is in your car deals, the money you haven't seen. And one of the biggest, largest amounts is depreciation. So for those of you who are not keeping your cars eight years, your goal should be to shop and get a great lease deal, not a regular lease deal, not an advertised lease deal. And so if you keep in your car long term, eight plus years, then you should not be thinking about leasing at all. OK, everybody clear on that? Type clear if we're clear. Eight year. I call that the eight year rule. You're going to hear me talk about three things that are all the same. The first question, the most important question, the eight year rule. They're all the same. All right. Go ahead, Dolan. Shoot the next question up. We're bringing them from all four platforms. This one's from YouTube. I drive an average of 22 to 25,000 miles a year. Would leasing still be a viable option for me? Great question. When I worked at Hyundai and I was a manager there for six weeks, the owner ended up getting indicted. It was like, all I needed was six weeks before God told me, son, this is not the place for you. But I learned something very important there. I, so I was helping a person who returned their lease. He had like 70 something thousand miles on his Hyundai. And he was returning the lease. And I said, um, did you lease this? He said, yeah, all I do is lease. Said, I'm in sales. I'm on the road, 25,000 miles a year almost. All I do is lease. I used to buy my cars. I was losing so much money. The depreciation, because think about that depreciation, y'all. For the regular person, it looks like this. The value of your car is like this. For the high mileage driver, it's like this. They're going to destroy that value in three years, right? So he was explaining this to me. And I'm listening. And then I looked at what he was paying and I'm like, it looks like he got a great Hyundai deal. Right. And then he paid additional, maybe one hundred seventy five dollars and he got his high mileage lease. 
And I said, I got to tell everybody I know about this because I was dealing with high mileage drivers coming back who wasn't leasing, who had all this negative equity. And I'm like, we got to do something different here. So he comes in and that's that's when I started, you know, diving in and seeing that for the short term, high mileage driver. Short term means you are not keeping the car eight years. It not, it doesn't change. Most important question. First question. Eight year rule. All the same. If you say, Deshaun, I drive 20, 25,000 miles a year. How many years you keep in the car? Probably 10. Then there's no need to lease. You can find a car that you can put 200 to 250,000 miles on in 10 years. They're out there. Get one of those. But if you're saying, Deshaun, I'm not keeping it eight years, I'm going to keep it five. Then you should absolutely be shopping for a lease. I have two strategies for the short term high mileage driver that's going to be better than you doing what you've been doing. Some people will tell you make high down payments bad because you're just throwing more money at the car. You won't get back. Um, some people tell you take shorter loans instead of five and six year loans, take four year loans. So you won't have negative equity later. Both, all, both of those solutions involve you throwing more money at the car that you're not going to get back. The two strategies that I teach is one, the high mileage lease. You're going to shop, get your offers. We always shop with 12,000. That's what we do. We get multiple offers. We get at least five. We get at least five because 80% of dealers are overpriced. You're not going to see that until you start getting multiple offers. When you start getting multiple offers, you're going to see that 80% are overpriced. We don't try to change them. We expose them. So once you see that, you're going to find the dealers that offer the best prices. You can do that manually by calling sales managers and getting multiple offers, or you can do it my way. In my book, I have a strategy called 25 to 5. We do everything online, and you're using my scripts and my email templates. So it's hard for me to break that down for y'all because I wrote these email templates. So either way, you get to the goal of at least five offers. Once you have the best offer, you're then going to adjust that offer to a high mileage offer with that dealer. You're going to let the dealer know, Hey, I'd like to adjust the mileage from 12 to 18,000, please. Hey, I'd like to adjust from 12 to 25. And that's what you do. We've had tons of people that do that. Compared to purchasing, it's thousands. Of, I mean, I helped a guy do this three years ago. He was like, man, that changed my life. Because he was buying luxury cars, high mileage, BMW. He went from that to an, uh, an Audi A7 high mileage lease. And when we did the math, he was saving like $15,000. And so it's not a question. Second thing I uh, teach is it's called two cars, one payment for you high mileage drivers. You don't want this doesn't apply to Uber and Lyft. So let's put it like if you're in business and you're putting thousands of miles on your car a month for business, different. I'm talking to regular people who like to shine. I'm in sales. I'm a realtor. I'm always on, I'm always on the road. This is for you. Second strategy is two cars, one payment. You're going to get one car. The first car is the purchase. It could be a new, pre-owned, doesn't matter. And that's going to be your mileage car. You pay that car off three, four, five, six years, and then you go lease the second car. Now you got the mileage car, and now you got the second car. That's your nice car. And so you're putting maybe $12,000 a year on your lease, maybe $10, $15,000 on your mileage car, and you're just doing that. You always have one payment. You're not having a, it's a, it's a, it's a manual payment at all times. And People love that. There's no right or wrong with those two strategies. It's just which one you think is best for you. Both of those you will absolutely love. It's very predictable. It's very, you can count your costs. You know what you're paying and scrap everything else. That is in my book for you high mileage drivers. Um, in case y'all don't know, my new digital book is called Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping. Throw the next question up on the screen, Dolan. Uh, thank you, uh, please. Um, it's called seven steps to saving time, money, and avoiding dealerships because everything we do, 90% of it is from home, sometimes a hundred, but we can't do a hundred with used cars. Um, and all our deals are made from home. We don't spend more than 30 minutes in car dealerships. We get bids. We make people bid for our business and, uh, you can get your book for 75% off for the next 30 minutes in my TikTok bio or in my Instagram bio, there's a website, get your book for 75% uh, off. You won't pay the normal $97 price, $24. And for you, for those of you who are on Facebook and Instagram, I put the link right, I mean, Facebook and YouTube, I put the link right here for you guys. Um, 
and you can get yours. Deshaun'sBook.com. All right, this one from Instagram. What if you sell a lease from a Jeep dealership to a BMW? Does that work against you? You cannot sell a lease if you have a if you have no third part. Like I sold my Jeep. They didn't have a third party restriction, but Jeep has many leasing companies. They have uh, Chrysler Capital. They have uh, Cal. They have credit unions that do leasing for them. So it depends on when you call your pay, when you do the equity assessment. We started, I think we started with that. That was the first thing we talked about in the show. So watch the broadcast on YouTube or Facebook if you missed that part. When you do your equity assessment, you're going to ask them, do I have a third party restriction? If you do not, then you can sell to anybody you want. I mean, not a person. You can sell to any of the companies I mentioned. You can sell to another dealership. But you should be getting bids. I would not be selling. See, that sounds like a trade. That's what that sounds like. That sounds like you saw a BMW, you got this old lease, and you're like, hey, I want the BMW, and I'm trying to get that lease back to them, in which case you're not going to maximize the value of the Jeep at all. All right, go ahead. Shoot the next question up, Dolan. All right, great questions today. We're taking them from all platforms, so keep typing them. What's the best way to sell a used car? Get bids. Equity assessment. If you have a car you are replacing, the equity assessment is how we get the, the most for the car. It's a bidding process that we created. It was at the beginning of this video. Now, here's what I said. Once you get those offers, if your highest offer is under $10,000, then you should consider selling your car privately. You could probably get, it's not hard as you think to sell a car on Facebook Marketplace now, uh, and you can probably get two to $3,000 more selling it privately. But that's only if you have a, uh, if your car is at a price where most people could pay cash. If you got a $15,000, $20,000 vehicle, most people can't pay cash for that. They need a loan. If you got an $8,000, $7,000, max maybe $10,000. You take a shot and you maybe get you, you maybe get a couple thousand dollars selling it on your own. But anyone else, equity assessment, I'm selling to the people, I'm getting bids, I'm getting six bids, and I'm gonna sell to the highest offer. All right, great question. Shoot the next one up, Dolan. Oh, hold on. Let me put the emergency link here. Somebody said the link is still saying full price. That means you missed the countdown, but we came up with something for the people that missed the countdown. Let me know if you guys can see this. It's an emergency link. I'm going to type emergency because we were seeing that people would go to the page, the countdown starts, then they come back to the show and they're asking questions. And once the, once the countdown hits zero, it's back up to $97. So uh, let, try that emergency link and let me know if you can get it that way. I just put it on Facebook. Go ahead. Uh, okay, this one's from TikTok. Reliability of Mercedes these days. Thinking about buying a 2021 A35. So you want to find out what the reliability of that particular car is. This is an extremely important step. When I worked for Mercedes, we had a Range Rover dealer next door. When I had my leasing company, uh, new car brokers rather, Range Rovers were in the shop all the time. People would tell me about them all the time. Now, that could be particular years. Um, same thing with Maseratis, could be particular years. But if you do what I'm about to tell you to do, you have a good shot of avoiding this. See, this happens when you start asking people their opinion on cars. Can y'all keep tapping the screen, running the lights up? I see y'all running them up. The more y'all tap the screen, the more attention TikTok brings to the broadcast, the more people we get a chance to reach with this information. So I appreciate y'all running them up. When you are um, asking people, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna tell you to never ask a person their opinion on a car, not even me. I don't care who they are. A mechanic doesn't matter. And I'm gonna tell you why. First of all, millions of cars are sold per year. Opinions are subjective, and there's not enough, no one person could tell you if a car are is good or not. They just can't. Maybe theirs is okay. Maybe theirs is not. But most people are fine with it. So what we do is this takes five minutes to do, and it'll protect you. This is in step four of my process called shopping, not buying. We're deciding what we want. We need to eliminate bad cars 
I don't care if you're like, man, I, I, I remember years ago, people were like, there was this one person like Deshaun, you know, I was looking at the Kia Telluride and I looked and the, this particular year had electrical issues. That's kind of sending me some red flags. I said, that's exactly what it's supposed to do. Next, maybe next year they'll fix it. This year it has electrical issues is what the data is saying. So you go to where the data is, which is Google, you type in the year, make model 2021, same thing you just typed in 2021, 835 AMG, initial quality. Now, if you're buying a used one, you don't have to type in initial quality because initial quality tells uh, what initial quality is, y'all, is what people are saying, what the data says in the first 90 days the vehicle was in the country. The first 90 days, what are people saying? What is the data showing? That's initial quality. Reliability is first three years. So you can you can you can check with uh, you can if you're buying a pre-owned one, I check reliability for sure because that's going to tell you the first three years. Google that, and then you're going to just scan scan those first couple articles. That's all you're going to do. Look for anything that has a red flag. Reliability score seven out of ten. Hmm? That's a little questionable. You know, reliability score six out of that's that's questionable. So when you scan those articles. You're going to see, you don't have to read them all. You're looking for anything that stands out, red flags, owner's report, you know, engine misfires and cars in the shop, right? These are things that you're, you're, you're looking for things that are like, oh, red flag. And now if you're buying a used car, you're going to look after you do reliability, you're going to replace that with longevity. Longevity is going to tell you what these cars are expected to do in the long run. Transmission issues how long they're going to last on average. That's how you find out if a car is good or not. Stop asking people. You can do what you want. You're a grown adult. I'm, I will recommend you stop asking people their opinion on cars because it does not matter. Their opinion is not going to matter when your car is in the shop and you're like, hey, but you know, I'm going to get it. John told me the car was good. He said he loved his. No one's coming to your defense. Go where the data is. All right, everybody clear? Type clear if you're clear on that. That's a five minute process that will save you thousands of dollars in headaches. No, no daggone reason to go out and save thousands of dollars on a car, get a ridiculous deal, and that car's in the shop three times a year. It negates the whole deal, right? All right, perfect. Shoot the next one up. Uh, all right, this one's from Instagram. I wanna buy my mother's lease because she has good equity in the car. How can I do it? before she turns it in well first of all make her aware and you have to do the equity assessment process because you have to see if she has a third party restriction if she doesn't and make sure you run the market value if you did and you're like hey it's a it's a good price you know um then you can certainly write up you know you she can call a leasing company and she should be able to sell to you um you just have to find out what that process is going to look like. If they may, I don't know if it, they're, they're going to require her to sell to a company because essentially they want to prevent, like the customer has a payoff. It's for you. So her payoff is for her. The customer, there's two payoffs for a lease, a dealer payoff and a customer payoff. That means the dealer pay, you know, can buy it for this. Any dealer Someone that has a dealer license can buy it for this or the customer. It's not an individual. So that means she's going to have to buy the car and then sell it to you, uh, which is fine. And, you know, that's the process. That's the only way you're going to get you. But if she has a third party restriction, then she cannot sell it to you. She's going to need to get bids and, you know, make sure she gets her equity. All right. And now, look, if she has a third party restriction, she can still buy it herself and sell it to you. That makes sense. So call the bank, get the payoff, find out if she has a third party restriction. And it sounds like either way, she would have to buy it and sell it to you. And if she's OK with that, then it should be very simple. OK, shoot the next one. Great question. Great question. This is another one from Instagram. I'm getting emails that started at my three-year lease anniversary on a four-year lease. Well, first of all, never do a four-year lease again. Um, you're paying two. Why don't we do four-year leases? Because leasing is a value play. 
leasing, there's two goals. Somebody uh, DM me right before we came on and said, leasing though, you 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 know, leasing is not good because you're you're not paying into equity. Uh, thanks though. Said it like you know, confidently ignorant. Um, and when I said to him, the goal of leasing is not to build equity. Equity is a bonus. We don't bank on it, don't count on it. That's not why we lease. We lease to avoid the natural depreciation. Always think of this. Value goes down like this. When you lease, you're going to pay this much. So if I would have bought and lost this much value in depreciation, I get a great lease, I pay this much. I get an incredible lease, a steal. Every now and then we get a steal, less than 1%. I pay this much. So my natural depreciation would have been here. And the beautiful thing about leasing is it's the head. So if the value stays up, I can sell it and I'll make more money at the end. So if I do happen to have a lease that holds its value, which is very rare in cars, not something to bank on, not something to count on. But if it does happen, I'm going to sell the car at the end and make the equity myself. So in the second person, uh, goal of a lease is to drive new cars for pennies on the dollar compared to purchasing. The goal is not to build equity. So wait, what was that question? Because I what was that question, Dolan? Because I know the me going into that answer was based on that question. If it's if it's going then if it's going then that's fine. Just shoot up the next one. But sometimes if you've been on a broadcast with me, you know I go deep with the answers and then I'll forget the question. All right, this is another one from TikTok. What's a good mileage to buy on a to buy a used car? Okay, so when we're searching for used cars, it's a great question. What is good mileage to buy on a used car? Okay, so the goal is to get the best car you can get for your budget. So therefore, when I'm searching for my cars, if I know that my initial goal may be twenty thousand, and then my max goal is twenty eight thousand. Um, in a few weeks, I will be releasing something I created called the Perfect Budget Calculator. It's in my book. So it's in step three of my book where we're budgeting. Um, I can't release it now because without you knowing how to use it, it's just it's just going to be sloppy. We need to roll that out the right way. But if I know that my initial strike price is 20000 and then my max budget is 28300 then what I'm going to do is I'm going to see, can I find a quality vehicle in that initial price? And if I can't, in that initial price, here's what it looks like. Short loan, no down payment, not using any of my equity. That's what it looks like. Next, next goal might be six-year loan, but no down payment, no equity, you know, and then we move on. And our max price is always going to be the longest loan we could take with any down payment. So as long as I know where all my goals are, I'm moving up accordingly and I'm seeing, can I get a nice used car in this budget? And I'm usually starting out to look for about 10 or 12,000 miles per year driven. Look for about 10 or 12,000 miles a year driven. And then you go from there and then you move up accordingly. And, and the way you move up, you either can go back a year or you can go up in mileage to 15,000 a year average. So start wide, we'll start with a hundred mile radius usually, and then We'll look for the newest vehicle we can get with 10 to 12,000 miles per year. And then if I don't see enough options, then I'll either go to 15,000 miles average driven per year and go back one year to slowly expand my options. That's that's typically how, how we're going to do it. That's typically how we're going to do it. Start with the goal to find the best. And don't expand. Don't just automatically go with a four or five year old car. Expand slowly. Sometimes I'll go to a 200 mile radius if I can't find the color I want. But I see that there's cars out here, but none of them are the color I want. That tells me the market is out here and I could find it, but I got to expand my options. I don't need to go older. If I see cars in the low range where I want them to be, but I don't see exactly what I want, I'll expand the options. But if I don't see enough choices at all, then I'm going to go back a year and I'm going to go up in mileage a little bit to see if I can expand my options. OK. All right. Go ahead. Uh, shoot the next one. Uh, so, wait, hold on. Hold that question right there. Don't take it down, Dolan. It's from Instagram. Somebody said going to buy 
a uh and i gotta make sure i know i'm getting facebook manually now i got you next ashley um going to buy a 2014 srx now 124,000. i hope you're paying cash and i hope that you've done you know some of the steps to make sure it has a good title great service records great accident history all right go ahead uh all right so this one's from instagram is it normal for a dealership to want 2000 down for a 10k car um we don't what's normal is for dealerships to do deals that are in their best interest and secondary for you if you're dealing with the 80 percent, the 80 percent, it's normal for them to do weird stuff it's normal for them to overcharge people it's normal for them to do this so you have no shopping process and you're at the mercy of one dealer you're tied into one car and it sounds like you are invested in that car and you have no leverage because you have given them the signs that i want that car not that hey i have multiple options i'm looking at multiple options i've seen seven of that car and um i can you know it's just the way you shop is creating that result, and I don't know how to help you out. I, I, listen, I'll give you an example, and then we'll go to Ashley's question. Some people will call back. This is back when I first got out of the business and I started teaching. I had a few people who would call me back then. They know now that I teach. I don't, you know, allow, I don't have time for calls, and I don't do DMs. It's just literally I make the information available. The people who want it are going to get it. But they would call me, Deshaun, I'm in this dealership right now. You know, I'm trying to get them down on this price. What should I do? I said, walk out. Yeah, but you know, is there any way I can get them down? Do you, do you want my advice or you want to do what you want to do? Nah, man, I'm trying to get the best price. Okay, walk out. Because you're never going to get the best price in the dealership. And even if you think you did, you're never going to have, what, what do we want? If anybody knows, it begins with a P. It's the most important thing. It's the guaranteeing that I paid less than everyone else. It's called price assurance. You can never have that until you start comparison shopping. You will always have a hint of buyer's remorse. If I ask you, here's the key. Did you, you think you got a good price on that car? Oh yeah, I, th I think all right. I think I did all right. Are you willing to bet $500 that you couldn't have got that car or a car like it for less money? Nah, man, I ain't. Nah, I don't want to take that bet. Right. So when you look at people like this, look, when you look at people like, look, v Vincent, he gets his pre owned Lincoln. He said, bottom line, purchase a three year old Lincoln Corsair, premium trim level, 40, less than 45,000 miles, clean car back inspection. Look, he said, my goal was to target a discount of 30 to 35% off MSRP. That's the true value percentage. Y'all will hear me say something like that. You can't buy a used car without knowing what it cost originally because you truly don't know how much you save. He said, I found a deal for off of 43 percent off of MSRP at a dealership that delivered the car from one state away. Short conversation with their finance manager. All done on my terms. He's get if I asked him, you willing to bet me 500? You couldn't have found a car like that for less. Yeah, I'll take the bet because he's shopping multiple offers, shopping the whole market. And he's not come, he's not pulling the trigger until he knows this was the lowest price in the market. He's not invested. He probably narrowed his search down like I did with my Infinity truck. I bought a used Infinity. I narrowed my search down to the top four, and then I went with the one that had the biggest discount from the brand new price. Brand new price was fifty four. I paid thirty one eight. I got a forty two percent discount. I'll take the bet that there was no other car in the market within a hundred miles of me, hundred fifty miles that was a better value than that. And the only way you're going to have the confidence when you make lease deals, purchase deals for new cars, purchase deals for used cars that you guarantee, I'll take the bet, there was no other offer out there lower than this, is you need to have multiple offers. That is what gives you the price assurance. Not only that, you'll save more money quicker. 60 minutes is all it takes for us to do these deals. The internet's here. I just want to teach you how to use it the right way. This is all in my book. Car shopping for people that hate car shopping. It's a digital book. You can get it for 75% off. Get your copy. You won't pay $97. If you get to my TikTok bio before 30 minutes, get it for 24. 
You can be using this tonight. Same thing with Instagram. You could be using this tonight in my Instagram bio and um, Facebook. If you guys, if you're watching on TV, just scan that QR code with your uh, with your phone or go to Deshaun'sBook.com. All right, shoot the next question in, and uh, we'll get through. We'll do, we, st we still got some more time. Let's get through. What I got to do? Uh, let me let me take Ashley. Hold on, Ashley said I have a 2018 Escalade that needs an engine. I'm in high. I'm a high mileage driver. Okay, many of you are going to be in the same situation. You're going to be like, Dad, same question I was going to ask. This is, so a lot of you are in the same situation. I have a 2018 Escalade that needs an engine. I'm a high mileage driver, so my car value is lower than my loan now. I need a new car. What do you suggest to trade in or lease? Uh, it's a 2018 Escalade. You don't need a new car. You need an engine. It it it, the, it see you. Here's what you're doing, Ashley. Here's what you're doing. Cars values here. Engine goes. Cars values almost nothing. 2018 Escalade that would normally be worth several, you know, a good amount. With no engine, it's worthless. So it would the worst financial decision would be to get rid of the car in that position. I, I mentioned my dad, he bought a GMC Envoy. It was pre-owned, three years pre-owned when he bought it. Engine went out maybe three years later. He got a mechanic, he got his mechanic, local mechanic, reputable mechanic, got him a used engine, put that engine in there about five years ago. Maybe six years ago, he's been driving it ever since. See, because we're not comparing the cost of replacing when you are doing this. If you're willing to take the hit, which is going to be a five-figure hit. To get out of that car, an Escalade engine, with an easily replaceable item that would keep that, you know, you're lit and you have a loan, you can do whatever you want to do, but the best thing for you to do is to find a local mechanic, a reputable mechanic, ask around, ask on social media, who's the shop that everyone knows, uh, everyone, all of you who have a car, if you have a car that doesn't have a warranty, a local mechanic is a must. A local shop that you build a relationship with that everyone knows is a must. And I would be trying to get a used engine to get in my Escalade and keep my Escalade. You get another five or six years out of it, like my dad. Put the used engine in, been driving it, and he's about to sell it now. He's finally getting a new car and he's had it for probably seven, eight. No, he's probably had that vehicle for close to 10 years now. That's big money that he saved versus, oh, engine went, fixable problem, I'm going to just go get a new car and I'm going to get rid of this one while it's worthless and I still got a loan. I'll take a $10,000, $15,000 loss on it. I can't recommend you do that. All right? No problem, Ashley. Glad. And that's all we need is a little guidance from somebody who's more experienced. All right, perfect. I needed to hear that. Let me do that. Five, six years from now, she'll be like, you know what? I put that engine in, paid the truck off, Kept drove. I got another five years out of it. There we go. You won. All right, go ahead. Shoot the next one up, Dolan. Great questions today. Great questions. This one's TikTok. What is considered short term in leasing? Um, three years. Three years. Every now and then, if you when we reach out to a dealership, like in my book, I have templates. We're always reaching out, and I want to go over what you're going to need to give a dealership to even get a quote. The things that you need is it, it, you, you're not realizing it's hard for you to shop online. One, because there's trained people who are trained to get you in the dealership or make it hard for you to shop online. But two, you're not giving them the information they need to actually compete for your business. So when you reach out, we always reach out for a three year, at least 39 months as well. We'll, we'll we let them know by email. We're open to 39 months and uh, we shop our leases with 12,000 miles. First payment due at signing only taxes and fees in the payment. And if they have a great two year program, they'll tell you because they know their program. So if they say, man, you know what? Nissan just put out a great two year lease program. They know a great lease program and they'll say, hey, are you open to it? But other than that, we don't explore it. We don't go and ask them for two year lease because 99 out of 99 times out of 100, they're overpriced 
uh, we're not going to get good value out of them. So it's going to be three years or 39 months. We don't do really longer than that. 42 months, no, that's three and a half years. Four years, no, because one of the benefits of leasing is the short-term ability to switch, always having a new car, you know, and, um, you know, once we're in the car for three and a half years, it's like we're getting to the point where we've eliminated some of the benefits and we're paying too much for a car that we're going to be giving back. So three years is what we do. And if you cannot find a car for three years, if you tell me, Deshaun, I, I need a car for one year, then you should be buying a very inexpensive used car, five grand, seven grand, eight grand, 10 grand maybe, because any other car that you buy and expect to trade it in two years or a year, it's not going to happen. That's the depreciation curve. You're buying it here, Deshaun. I need to keep it until here. Okay. That's your loss right there, though. You don't start winning until seven, eight years is when it starts cooling off. So if you don't get to the eight-year mark, then you should not be buying 15, 20, 30, 40 thousand dollar cars at all. You're either going to have a long-term view and win long term, or you're going to have a short-term view, three years, and you're going to win with aggressive leases. Anything in between besides that, like I said, those we call them smart cars, saving money at the right time. I'll get in. A little bit of money, five grand, seven grand, I could swap out of that, no problem. But going in and buying these in these fifteen, twenty thousand dollar cars, mm -mm. you can't beat depreciation. It's going to be you, and now you're trained to see it. Before you're like, why, why, why am I losing? It's because you you don't see the unseen expense, which is depreciation. That's what's killing you, short term buyers. All right, go ahead, shoot it up, Dolan. Great question. Let me see Facebook because we're doing Facebook manually. See, Billy said, uh, had to transfer some money. Could you put up the emergency link again, please, before you go? Yes, absolutely. Yes, here is the emergency link. I'm putting it on Facebook. For those of you who missed the 75% off from, for your book, uh, I'm putting the emergency link here. Dang, now it's not coming up. Hold on. And uh, oh, let me make sure. All right, there you go. It's up. Okay, this one's from Facebook as well. Oh, all right, we finally got, uh, Dolan was able to get some questions from Facebook. All right, what will be a good interest rate on a 2024 GMC 1500? There's no way. That's a lot. All right, this is a good question. What will be a good interest rate on a 2024 GMC 1500, 700 plus score? The same way we don't know how much we're going to save off that vehicle. We don't know what the lowest in, in the market is. We don't know what the lowest offer in the market is. We get bids to see. And there's three steps in what I call the bank bidding war. First thing you're going to do is see, does GMC have any special interest rates? Whenever you're looking for a car, there's three steps in this bank bidding war where we have multiple banks and credit unions fight it out for our, for our interest rate, for our loan, because there's a lot of money in loans. If you're buying a 70, that's about a $70,000, $80,000 truck, depending on how much you finance, literally one point on the one point on the interest rate might be two to $2,500, one point. So if you're not taking shopping for your loan as serious as you're taking shopping for the price of the car, you're going to lose thousands of dollars. So we bid. Now, if you check and you see GMC is running 0 0.99, there's no reason to shop anywhere else. No one's going to beat that. That's a finance. That's like a finance rebate. That's always the first thing we do. Check, is there any special interest rates on the car? Certified pre-owned car, any special interest rates? If we see that, that eliminates the need to get bids. Now, we don't always buy certified pre-owned cars because if they're not priced competitively, we're not overpaying to get a certified pre-owned car. So uh, sometimes you'll see three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 more for the certified pre-owned. No, no, we'll buy a quality car that's not certified pre-owned um, and be in a better financial situation. But once you find your best offer, and you get your bids on that truck, whoever wins the bid, we get at least five offers. In my book, I call this the 25 to five strategy. We connect with 25 dealers online. We get, it takes us about 20 minutes. And within 48 hours, we're going to have at least five to seven offers. 
once I we identify where the best offer is from, that is the person we're going to get the purchase order from, buyer's order that has all the numbers written up, and we are going to call our bank, our credit union, or go online, and we're going to start letting people access our credit. It's never before. No one is ever touching our credit before we have found the vehicle we're buying. There's no hard pulls ever before we have found the vehicle we're buying. You don't need hard pulls to get offers. You don't need hard pulls to get quotes. Deshaun, they told me I did. They lied to you. You don't need them to get quotes. And if you do what I'm telling you to do, you will expose off oh, look. You, you, you got to understand that you need to unlearn anything that is not what I'm saying. Test my stuff until it doesn't work. That's what you do. I'm telling you that you bring me your goal and then you test what I'm telling you until it doesn't work. Don't add to what I'm telling you. Don't don't make up your own. All right, I'm going to just freestyle this part here. Don't do that. Take what I'm telling you, use it, and then you'll see the difference. But you can't mix what I'm telling you with the old way that you used to buy. It's not going to work. You have to do all of what I'm saying because I have this thing to a process. It's like McDonald's. You can't go in and just say, oh, well, you know, I know I'm supposed to take the fries out when the, when the thing starts beeping, but I think the people might like the fries a little less well done. I'm going to take them out early. You can't. <laughs> Don't take the fry. When you hear the beep, that's what it is. So this is how you do the bank bidding war. You're going to find your car, come home. You're going to get multiple offers because the credit bureaus allow you many days to let people bid for your credit as long as, within a, as, long as it is within a certain window of time. Experience says 14 to 45 days. If they look and see, oh, you were rate shopping, then you're, that's going to have the same effect on your credit as one hard pull. So if one hard pull would have dropped your credit nine points, 30 hard pulls will drop your credit the same hard points when you come out of the rate window. So once you get all those bids from home, your bank, your credit union, online, go online, car loans online, light stream, all these people. And then whoever wins that bid, you now call the dealership. Hey, I got this rate from my, you know, whatever, ABC Credit Union, ABC Bank. And you see if the dealer banks can beat that because the dealership has another nine or 15 banks. And you want to have them calling and saying, OK, all right, let me see if I can beat this. And they're going to call you and do one or two things. And these, this is going to give you what we do, what we need before we buy. It's the only thing we are looking for when we buy anything, price assurance. They're either going to tell you, hey, look, I got bad news, but it's good news. All right, what? Listen, I, none of my banks can beat that rate. So, you know, thanks for the opportunity, but, you know, you got a great rate. So uh, we'll get the car ready for you and, you know, you, you just let us know what you need. Right, perfect. In which case, price assurance. Are you willing to bet $500 you couldn't have got a lower interest rate? Absolutely. Yeah, I'll take that bet because I got bids. Or they're going to call you and say, listen, um, great news. Look, you had a good rate, but I got a bank that's going to beat it. They're going to beat it by half a point. They're going to beat it by a point, whatever. If they beat it by half a point, they just saved you another 500 bucks. Depending on the loan, could be more. So that's the bidding war. And that's how you, you don't ask, how much can I save off this vehicle? How much shit is a good interest rate? You get bids and you let the bids reveal what the below, what the bottom of the market is. Everybody clear on that? If you're getting value and you're clear on that, type dollar signs if everybody's clear. Everybody clear? Type dollar signs if you're clear. Thank you. Absolutely, Wanderson. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. Got it. Thanks. All right. Perfect. Sam, got you. All right. Billy D, I see you. Perfect. All right. Perfect. Kenneth, I see you. Wonderful. So this is what it's about, y'all. Listen, we we um we are very committed to those who are committed to their money. If you are committed to your money, you're going to love what we do. You're going to love using these strategies. In my book, my new digital book, Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping, uh, these things are broken down step by step. There's seven steps to our shopping process, whether you're buying, whether you're leasing, new car, used car, it's seven steps. And step seven is delivery. So this isn't a book that you read. It's a book you use and you cross off steps. And by the time you get to step seven, I'm congratulating you on you're about to pick up your car or you're about to have your car delivered. So using this book, you're going to 
progress to your car. You don't read it and then go, all right, I read the whole book. Now let me go and start shopping. It's not the way this works. So you can get your copy for 75% off. It's normally $97. Go to my TikTok bio. It'll be in your inbox in about five minutes. Same thing with uh, Instagram. There's a website there. You guys can go and get yours. And you have the links on Facebook. Or you can scan that QR code if you're watching us on the TV. Scan that QR code with your phone. As long as you get there before 75, uh, before uh, 30 minutes is up, you got 75% off your copy. So uh, let's go. We'll do. All right. Thanks. Dolan's already on top of it. This one's from TikTok. How should you purchase if you drive 30,000 miles a year? We already uh, answered that. Um, you should watch the replay. I don't want to. I don't want to answer the same question for those who've been on here. But after the broadcast, somebody somebody said they drive twenty to 20, uh, twenty two to twenty five thousand miles a year. Go watch that part of the broadcast and get your answer because it's it's the same answer. The only difference is if you guys are if if you're doing Uber, if you are renting your cars out where you can't predict the miles to shine. If I have a good year, I might do sixty thousand miles a year. But some years I might do uh, I might do you know twenty thousand. Um, your goal is to put as many miles as possible on the car, and you can't predict it. Then you should be making sure your loan matches. Here's a very important question for you. Uh, you need to ask yourself. And if you're in business, this will make sense to you. When am I going to replace the car? If you say to yourself, "I'm going to replace the car in, in four years." then you should not have a loan longer than that. Because what many of you are doing, you you know, Uber drivers and you, you people who are renting your cars, you're taking normal uh, loans, five, uh, five and six and seven year loans. And, and, and God forbid you take a seven year loan, no one should be taking a seven year loan. Um, you are replacing your car while you still have lots of loan left and you're putting hundreds of thousands of miles on your car. So you always have negative equity. What you're doing is you're you're taking a little bit more profit per month, like maybe $200 more per month or $250 more per month, but you're pushing all your losses to the back. So when you're ready to replace the car, you come in and you got a $15,000 balance and you have to transfer that and you got to eat that. That's pushing your, what you do is take a shorter loan, four-year loan, yeah, your payment might be $250 more per month. That's all right. It's a business move. You're writing this off. And then you can, after four years, you say, okay, it's time to replace this car and it's paid off. So instead of you having a big balance, you have a car that is probably still worth $3,000, $4,000. And that's how you structure this in a way where you win. I want to win while I'm driving and I want to win later when I go to replace the vehicle. That's what you do. All right. Everybody else, you follow what we talked about for the high mileage drivers uh, earlier in the show. OK, go ahead. What shoot that one up? No, uh, Beth, it's not 97. Um, you didn't see the emergency link. That's the normal price. You may have missed the countdown. I'm going to put it here for you again. Let me put the emergency link for you. Because um, some of you who missed the countdown. I told you, some people go there and they come back and they like, you know, that countdown still going. So I'm going to put the emergency link for you. There you go. Try that. All right. TikTok, should you include gap insurance on your lease vehicle? That's a great question. We always request that gap is included. Now, most leases include gap, but you don't want to assume this. Do not assume that the lease includes gap. Don't do it. Because some leases like, you know, Mazda, Mazda used to always include gap. I know three, four years ago when the pandemic started, they took gap out. And so it becomes problematic when you make a deal for X numbers, X amount per month. And then you go in to sign your paperwork and they're like, hey, do you want to buy gap insurance? And you're like, wait, thought it was included. So in our template, I have an email template because everything we do with new cars and leases is email. We always in there in that template is please include gap insurance. If you're getting quotes manually, you always need to make sure gap insurance is included. Don't make, you know, and they're going to, most people are going to say, yeah, gap insurance is included. But for the rare cases where it's not, you don't want to be surprised. So always, always. All right. Well, we just hit an hour. We we try to keep these to an hour. Um, and great. This is a great, great call, a great show. You know, uh, a lot of great questions. 
you know, we can stay on all day, but certainly uh, we want to keep these live streams coming. Whenever you see them, jump on. Uh, we get all types of questions. So even if you're watching a rebroadcast, you're going to find that you can get your questions answered in a lot of cases because uh, many of you are in the same situation. So uh, we'll keep these going. For those of you who had the book, use it. Please write me uh, eat, when you when, as soon as you get the book, do not DM me because I don't see DMs. We have thousands of, you know, we just hit two million followers. So we're getting hundreds of DMs across all these platforms. We can we as soon as you get your book, you get a support email because sometimes the book you type something wrong in the email and it doesn't come. And we you, I want you to reach out to support and they'll make sure they check and get you your book. But other than that, uh, it's no reason why you won't get it. You know, we've been able to put this in a lot of people's hands. Thank you for all the gifts and, and email me with your deals. When you pick up your car, the difference with using these strategies is you're no longer going to be just excited about the car, but ashamed of the deal. What I mean is ashamed of the deal. You'll see tons of people and you may have been in a situation where, hey, got a new car. Let's not talk about what we paid for because you're not that proud. You're not that confident. When you do this, you'll be sending me Deshaun. Look at this at least Just pick this up. 1.2 percent. Hey, Deshaun, look at this new car I just purchased. You know, lowest it was out of out of seven offers I got this deal to beat them all. Look how much I saved. Boom. Sean, look at this used car. I got, you know, X percent off true true value percentage. This is how you're gonna talk. And uh and it's empowering, and this is what you deserve. So um for those of you who have the book, please email me when you get your copies. I mean, when you get your cars, and uh, I look forward to re reading your success stories and congratulating you. So we'll see you on the next broadcast. And uh, those of you who want to watch the replay, it'll be up on YouTube or it'll be up on Facebook. Check it out, and uh, I'll see you all next time. God bless. And then if you are shopping for a car now or in the next 12 months, I want you to type me in the comments. All right, so we know who we're talking to. And um, Instagram, all right, Instagram, I see Instagram log this out again because I, I switched from the screen. We're just getting used to this. But as you come in, if you are um, shopping for a car now or in the next 12 months, just type me. And I want you to, I want to know because I want to talk specifically to y'all, specifically to y'all. If you're, if you're shopping for a car, you know, after that, that's fine. But I want to talk specifically to, 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 to the people who are shopping now. Now, um, after you, after you uh, let us know if you're shopping, I want you to check in. Where we at? Where we at today? Let me know where you are in the country. I like to do a roll call check-in. Where are we at in the country? Good to see you, Calvin. Good to see you, Catrella. Good to see you, Charlisha. Steeler Nation, St. Louis in the building. I see you. Okay. Hold on. Let me go here. TikTok. All right. Uh, where y'all at? Let's let's. Okay, I see Dallas, Texas. I do. I see Tampa. Um, hold on. I'm trying to see every Chicago, Illinois, VA Beach, Utica. I see you. Check in. Where we at today? Where we at this afternoon? Evening, morning. Come on in. All right, we got the whole country on here. <laughs> and we got the whole country on here. All right, I want to welcome y'all to Car Q&A with me, Deshaun, the auto advisor. As you come in, if you are, if you could spend a minute or two with us, five, 10 minutes, an hour, uh, you're going to get a lot of value out of it. We're getting ready to do some rapid fire Q&A. Um, and um, we're going to be answering all types of questions about car shopping and what you need to know to make sure you're saving thousands on your next car and every car you get after that. So as you come in, if you're not subscribed, if you're not following, um, you will benefit from hitting that follow button. You will benefit from hitting the subscribe button because we're going to be doing this live show pretty regularly to make sure that you guys have access to all the information. So before we get into Q&A, I want to give people time to come in. I also want to do finish up the housekeeping. My new digital book, Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping, is now officially uh, released. We are doing a 75% off sale. It's normally $97. It's a digital book. 
It has links to videos. It has links to my scripts. There's no guesswork in this, y'all. I want to give y'all a process that y'all can use for the rest of your life without having to worry about, you know, I want y'all to be able to guarantee a success. So if you if you're on Instagram, you can go to the uh, Instagram bio. You won't leave the broadcast. Get your 75 percent off because it's only available for a few minutes at 75 percent off TikTok bio and then um, Facebook and Instagram. Y'all can go to Deshaun's or you can scan the QR code. So sent, let's go. Let's get your questions going. Uh, I want y'all to enjoy using that book. Get your 75% off and enjoy not reading it. Enjoy using it. All right. So let me see. Let's start bringing in some comments. Um, where's our first question? Do I have to get financing? Oh, by the way, in a few minutes, y'all, I'm going to be giving y'all a very, very deep look into a game that's going to help you understand leasing versus buying. So in about five, 10 minutes, we'll start that game and you're going to love it. You'll never be confused on whether leasing or purchasing is going to save you more money uh, after we play this. Do I have to get financing uh, uh, to lease a car? No, you don't. Whenever we lease a car, we are always using the dealer's financing department, their company, the bank that makes the car. And because we can't shop for our own financing, how do we make sure that they're not marking up the interest rate on the lease multiple offers? There's no way for you to make sure they're not marking up the interest rate on the lease without multiple offers. That is what reveals the true deals uh, when you're shopping for a lease. So there's no interest rate to shop for. But we must protect against interest rate markups with multiple offers because some dealers will mark up the interest rate and never tell you. They'll just give you the quote. And they're depending on you not shopping their competition to find out that they marked up the interest rate on the lease. All right. So when you get your offers, it always with multiple offers. Shout out to the sharers. Shout out to everybody who's sharing the broadcast. Uh, if this is your first time on a live with, with me here, just type one. Type the number one if this is your first time on a live. I'm near the end of a three year lease. Is it best to buy the vehicle or lease another? It's very rarely uh, best to buy. Very rarely. Shout out to the first time viewers. Good to see y'all. Very rarely if ever good to buy your lease. I'm going to tell you all why. Because when you buy your lease, you're buying a used car. When you buy your lease, you are buying a used car. That's all that's happening. So being that you are buying a used car, you need to know if would I normally buy a used car versus leasing. And the only way it makes sense to buy your lease out is if you're keeping the car another eight years. I'm going to tell you why. You've already had the car for three years. You've already had the car for three years. Most people, when you buy your lease out, you're getting another five or six year loan for the balance. So you're committing to eight or nine years of payments on the same car. This spills into bad lease deals. The reason we don't take 48 months leases on a, on a lease, because it's too it's, we're paying too long on a vehicle that we're giving back. We, are, we never want to be tied up long term in a vehicle we're giving back. That's the whole point. Leasing is meant to be three years, 39 months, sometimes two years, depending on what they're offering, in and out. Switching cars very fast, always under warranty, keeping our payments low. OK. Um, can you all light up TikTok with the likes? Can you all continue to tap the screen on TikTok? I see we got a few hundred people. We got about 400 people on total all the broadcast. Um, could you could could you actually hit that share button? Because I promise you, y'all, no one who no one will ever get mad at you for sharing my page with them. I guarantee you that. In fact, the, the uh, my goal is to get them to thank you. Hey, thank you for sharing that. I like that guy's stuff. We try not to waste any time here. What about paying cash? VJ Live said. Let me put this question up on the screen. Uh, if you're on, make sure you're subscribed on YouTube so y'all can see the whole thing, the presentation. Uh, when, when we share these numbers. We can't do that on Instagram and TikTok. So VJ Live said, what about paying cash? I have about 15,000 and I don't want payments, but they keep trying to push me to 2025 grand range so I can have payments. Here's the thing. If you can find a quality car for 15 grand, great. If it's going to force you to buy something that's not, who's heard you always pay cash for a car? If As you come in, thank you, God. Ahead. Shout out to the sharers. I see y'all. Who's heard always pay cash for a car? Type me in the comments. If you've heard always pay cash for a car, 
type me in the comments. I see y'all lighting up. Keep tapping the screen on TikTok. We appreciate it. Y'all lighting up the likes. Y'all can see where we at on the likes in the top left. Who's her always pay cash, right? 51 times, 51, 50 times, heard it. VJ Live said, heard it all my life. Now, listen, bunch of Dave Ramsey advice. Now, here's the real. I'm not. Here's what I'm just telling y'all. We got a bunch of people on here. Hundreds of you all say, yes, I've heard you pay cash for cars. Now, there's two schools of thought here. One is no debt. Now, I'm not, if your philosophy is no debt, I'm not here to convince you to change your philosophy. Here's what I'm here to talk to you about. If that's not, if your philosophy is I want to do what makes the most financial sense, then we will have that conversation. Because people who in people who could pay cash for cars and don't, they typically are making money on their money. When I was in the dealership, people would come in, they would ask, what, what are the interest rates this month? If the interest rates were one, you know, 0%, something special like 0%, 1%, 2%, 3%, if they knew that they were getting 10, 15, 20% returns on their money, they're not going to put it in a car. They're going to use the bank's money at 1, 2, 3%, and they're going to use their money to keep making 10, 12, 15, 20%. That's the philosophy. So they view that as I'll pay 3%. They view it more as a business transaction and as a, 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 a leveraging money to make more money. See, some people will tell y'all people who don't pay cash for cars, they're, in, they're into debt. But I'm here to tell you that when I sat with very, very savvy people in my career with Mercedes and General Motors, I had tons of people who could easily have wrote a check for the car. I want you to know that if your goals are to eventually get into making more money with your money, investing your money, getting 10%, 12%, 8%, trying to beat inflation, then you're going to have a problem putting your cash into cars. Because not only if let's say we park right now, this is just as answering VJ Live's question, because I got it up on the screen here on YouTube and Facebook. He's asking about paying cars. And more, many of you, as you sit on the show, you'll see that. That's a similar question. Many of you will see someone's going to ask the same question you have. When we start seeing that we can actually use the bank's money for less. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna realize that when you put twenty thousand dollars of your hard-earned cash into a car, that money cannot make you more money. That twenty thousand dollars that you just put in the car cannot make you more money. You have, you have maxed out the value of that twenty thousand. It's in a car. You can't pull it out. You, you could refinance, but that's not happening. You're going to refinance and just get another loan. The point is your money's in that car now. So had you had an opportunity to invest that 20 and make 8%, 10%, 6%, 12%, 12%, that's what the people who don't pay cash for cars who are wise are doing. I'm not telling you there's a difference. Look, I talk a lot about budgeting. I talk a lot about affordability. All through my book, I have systems and boundaries uh, the rule of 72 and the 10th birthday, how long of a loan you take, how much, when should the car be paid off? That's all in my book. You can get it 75% off or you can watch my videos. I'm going to always teach it. But if you want it all in one place right here, get the book 75% off. It's in my TikTok or Instagram bio. But that's what we got to know. We got to know if we're going to use leverage and use the bank's money, there are extremes of leverage. There is over leverage. And we cannot be over leveraged. That means we're taking a loan that's too much, too long, too, you know, we just want to borrow, borrow, borrow to try to afford a car. And you see this a lot with older cars, people buying luxury cars that they really can't afford because, uh, you know, brand new to cars, 80 grand. But if they get a 10 year old one and they get a five year loan, now they're in a 2013 AMG Mercedes with 90,000 miles on it. So that's the opposite extreme using leverage and loans to buy things we can't afford. But then the other opposite extreme is paying cash when we don't have to. Finding that balance between getting the car we want, getting the best car we can afford, because you said, hey, I'm trying to find a car for 15 grand. I can't find it. 
they want me to spend 2025. Well, the name of the game is you better learn how to find any, if there's any cars out there for 15, you better learn how to find them. And then, and you look everywhere, you look over all the marketplaces. And before you raise your budget up to 2025, we have something we do called the perfect budget. You got to go to 17 first. <laughs> you don't go from 15 to 2025. You go from 15 to 17. See if I can find anything good for 17. Oh, I can't. All right, now I go to 19. And I have this calculator that's going to help you guys inside the book. It's called the perfect budget calculator. You put in the money you have, you put in what you want your payment to be. It's going to tell you how much car you can buy. You put in your state so we could have. How many times y'all walk in, right? And you're like, man, I want to spend 25 grand on a car. But you forgot to factor in taxes and the fees. How many times does that happen? Type ouch if you've ever deal, dealt with that. Let's be willing to be honest. You had a budget in your mind. This is what I want my monthly payment to be. This is what I want to spend on the car. Next thing you know, you're a, you're a little over that budget or sometimes a lot over that budget and you're leaving like, I see, all right, I see you 919, Mike. Thank you. I see you, Mika Larkin. Shout out to everybody willing to be honest. See, in order for us to really make sure we don't make these mistakes, we got to be honest of the fact we've made them. So that's what we want to do. We want a budgeting system that tells us when we can, it, the, you spend any more than this and you're going to be over your budget. You said you want a payment of $400 a month. That means you said you only got $1,000 to put down or nothing to put down. Or Here's what you can spend on a car. And when you use this perfect budget calculator, you're going to never go over budget. Because honestly, y'all, we don't want to be anywhere near our top of our budget. We want to be shopping under our budget. That's where I want y'all, under your budget. That's why I said if your budget was 15 and then your max might be 2025 with a loan, all right, we got to go from 15 to 17 to, to 17, 5 to 18. We don't just jump to 2025, but we need a methodical system to do that, to help us do that. How do I get out of an upside down lease? Jose, you can only sell out of it. That's all you could do. You could sell out of it. If you, no matter what, y'all, who's in a car that they want to replace and they think they're upside down? They may have some negative equity. This is all in the book. I don't, I would really like y'all, the reason why I'm doing the 75% off, couple reasons. The book just came, officially came out, but I really want y'all not having to remember this. Yes, this live rebroadcast, is going to be syndicated. So no matter when you're watching it, the information is going to be valuable and applicable, but I really want y'all to have the book so that you can actually reference the information over and over again. Thank you, B-Bad. Thank you for this info. Thank you, SJ, uh, uh, SJF Racing. So, all right. Yes, 25 goes to 30 real fast. Let me show y'all something, and then we'll continue. This is where we are right now on Goodreads.com. We're rated 4.94. We've already received 20, 27 reviews, 31 ratings, and the book hasn't been out yet. So if you go to Goodreads.com, if, you, if you're on YouTube, if you're on Facebook, you can see what I'm posting. But I, I'm sharing the fact we're already rated 4.94, 31 ratings, and the book hasn't come out yet. So now that it's officially out, I really want you all to have it. And so make sure you take advantage. Get your 75% off. It's normally $97, but while you're watching here, it's it's uh, it's 75% off. Everything I teach is in there in one place so you don't have to remember it. All right. Um if you have a, let's talk to the people who are in an upside down lease or upside down loan. First of all, we don't want to be there. I'm going to tell y'all why. If you're in an upside down lease, that means you didn't pick your mileage correctly. That means something happened because with a lease, you have to have predictable miles. You have to know how much you're going to drive roundabout. You got to be able to guesstimate. That's why if you're running a Toro business, when you're trying to rent the car out, for you know, forty thousand miles a year, or you don't know how much it's going to be on that car. Could be twenty, could be forty. A lease is not good because you can't predict the mileage. But in normal life, we can predict our mileage very closely. Now, when things happen, let's say you weren't work, you were working at home, and now all of a sudden you are, you know, you're not working from home anymore. Now you're 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 um, you you got to drive into the office. To, 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 you know, 20 miles away. Well, that's a lifestyle change. That can lead to you racking up mileage penalties. But here's what we don't want to do. You don't want to buy that car, y'all. I'm going to tell you why. 
every time you lease, you have a price that you can buy the car for. Most times it ain't worth that. Yes, in the last couple of years, we saw a couple of cases where, you know, the buyout prices were good. Before the pandemic, the buyout prices usually were nowhere near what you could get a comparable used car for. So if your car was three years old with 36,000 miles on it, the prices they wanted were, were putting was to make you not buy the car, was to make you send it back to them so that they can handle it and resell it. So what? So if the price wasn't worth it to begin with, with 36,000 miles, I've seen people, you go over your miles and you're like, I'm over the miles, I'm just going to buy it. The price wasn't worth it with good mileage. The price wasn't worth, if you had 36,000 miles, that car wasn't worth you buying for the buyout price. You actually have 48,000 miles and they want you to pay the same price for it. So it's important that we, if we have to deal with penalties because we didn't structure the lease correctly or because we, we um, or because we didn't quite know what we were going to be driving or we had a lifestyle change, taking the penalty and applying it over to our next deal is always, not always, but in, in most cases, going to be less money than us buying an overpriced car with high mileage now. We cannot just keep buying our leases without doing a market check. So when you asked about how do I get out of a lease with negative equity, all you can do is build, find out what the penalty is. There's three ways that you could get out of this thing. You could either pay the difference. So if you got, you know, you could, you, you could wait until your mileage, um, see, and this is, all right. If you have negative equity on a lease, I don't even like to call it negative equity because it's not, there's no such thing as negative equity on a lease. There's penalties. That's different. Penalties on a car you purchase. Yes, there's negative equity. You bought it, you have a loan on it. The value is not worth the loan. Negative equity. With a lease, we have penalties, over mileage penalties. And now, some people say, well, I'm going to go over mileage. I'm going to get out of the lease three months early. But you don't realize if you get out of the lease early, what do you still have remaining? Payments. Three three months of payments. Six months. Who's ever had a dealer say, hey, don't worry about the payments. We'll take care of the old payments. Who's ever heard that? Type me if you've ever had a dealer say, you don't worry about the old payments. We'll, we'll take care of the old payments. Okay. Lots of you. The problem with that is the payments don't disappear. They always get rolled over to the next lease. They always get rolled over to your next deal. So what I want y'all to start doing is I want y'all to see that. The money is not hitting. When you have negative equity, 5,000, you got this baggage from your old car, it does not go away. It gets either transferred or you can pay off the difference. So the key is to stay out of negative equity, to stay out of penalties, because yes, once you have them, they have to be accounted for. We got to find our great deal and then we got to bring our penalties over on top of the great deal. That's all we can do. Now, you better try to see what your car is worth selling it because you said you're over miles. You call your leasing company, you get your payoff. You find out what your cash offers are. Go to Broom. I'm so Broom's out of business. Sorry, CarMax, Driveway, Carvana, Car, um, Auto Nation, and Kelly's Blue Book Instant Cash Offer. You can go to Car Guru, sell my car too. These are all people that give you cash for your car. That's what your car is really worth, what those companies will pay. Whoever is the highest bidder, we take that. See, it, what I'm teaching y'all, and, and some of you are going to get it immediately right here, right now. Some of you, it's going to take a while to get the fact that your money comes when you your your savings come when you start learning to make people bid instead of getting one offer. You get the most money when you start learning to make people bid. And so what you have to do is get multiple offers, find out what your car is worth. When you go on those websites, when they ask you, is it a lease? Say no. Because their websites are set up to where if it if they if you put it's a lease, it's going to automatically trigger that they can't buy it. But they can buy it. We've been doing this, y'all. I got hundreds and hundreds of members in Cars from Home University. We shop all around the country. 
you must put no when you're getting offers for a lease because their computer is set up to automatically think that it's a third party restriction and they can't buy it. But when you call your bank, you're, you're going to ask them, do I have a third party restriction? If they say no, then that means you can sell to anybody. But again, the way these companies are set up, they saw us making all this money on these cars and the bank said, no, we got to do these third party restrictions. And it was so many people going to those websites saying, oh, I'm about to sell my lease. And then they would get to their get there or they would talk to them and they would say, no, we can't buy it because it's a third party restriction. So they just made their website default to we don't buy leases. But we do know if you don't have a third party restriction, they can buy your lease. And it's very important for you to know that. And if you do have a third party restriction, it doesn't limit that. you. It doesn't limit the fact you can sell and make money. It limits who you can sell to. When you have a third party restriction, they say you can only what they're saying is you can only sell your car to a dealer that makes the same brand. You cannot sell to a uh, third party Carvana driveway. You can't sell to them directly. You can only sell to a dealer. So what does that mean? I see y'all lighting up the likes on TikTok. Can y'all keep tapping the screen? Let's keep let's keep those likes going up. I see it. I appreciate it. And, and thank you to everybody sharing. So when you when you are, um, I just got off my point, but I know it was about selling. So multiple offers, y'all. This is all in the book. Car shopping for people that hate car shopping. You could who has their copy? They, who who got their copy? We'll continue. We got about enough. We got some more time. We're gonna keep doing Q and A. But who who got their copy of the book already? Who got their seventy five percent off? I really want y'all using this. The book is affordable for everybody. Everybody. All right, especially at 75. Now it should show, make sure it's not showing the 97% uh $97 price. That's the normal price. I see you, 5150. Okay. All right, I see you, Jimbo. Okay. Okay, I see you, Diane. I appreciate you. Okay, and I want y'all to use it. Don't read it, use it. That is like a literally it's an action guide. That ain't a book you read, and then you have a bunch of things you gotta remember. I'm walking you through the process step by step. And, and, and again, everything I teach is in my videos. So I don't hold back in my videos, but I do want y'all to have access to all the information in one place. If you, you know, if you don't want to cycle through all my videos to try to find it. All right. Is it worth buying a car from Carvana? That's a great question, Danny. It depends on if it's the best deal in the market. Danny said, is it worth it to buy a car from Carvana? Now, you can put anything in there. You can put driveway. Any of these online sites, online car buyers, online uh, used car sellers. But the here, I'm, here's, what the, here's the game that we avoid. We cannot shop from them exclusively because here's what they try to do. They will try to sell. They'll try to sell you a car based on variety. Hold on. My do not disturb should be on. My do not disturb should be on. So what, anytime you see, hold on one second. I keep getting a call and I don't know why it always does this. I don't want to lose the people on Instagram. Hold on, Instagram. We got you. All right. We should be back on Instagram now. Okay. So most times, especially when we're buying, when we're selling our cars to these people, you got to realize we sell our cars to Carvana, to driveway, to all these companies because they pay m more than dealers on average. Once we, if they're paying more than dealers on average, they're usually not the lowest price. When they're selling the cars, they're usually one of the highest. You can't pay people more than dealers and then turn around and sell for less than dealers. That could be part of the reason why Vroom went out of business. But whenever we shop for a pre-owned car, Carvana is always on the list. Whenever we shop for a pre-owned car, CarMax is always on the list. Driveway is always on the list. Why? Because we shop everywhere there's a used car. 
you've been you may have been trained to shop local with used cars or to shop one oh i only go to car gurus then you're missing the stuff that's on cars.com you're missing the stuff that's on carfax.com you're missing the stuff that's on auto um, um driveway you're missing the stuff that's on car uh carmax so we got it just the same way if we were buying a baby stroller we're gonna go to walmart right dot com we're gonna go to amazon right we're going everywhere right that's the same way we got to be when it's when we're shopping for used car carvana is just one marketplace and unfortunately there are people who shop from them exclusively because they're like oh i just love carvana i don't have to go into the dealer and they don't realize that one you can buy you can you know what i teach you 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 won't be in a dealer more than 30 minutes and also if i'm not checking their prices i'm gonna overpay and i'll be i'll I literally have a, you know, oh, I didn't have to go to a dealer, but but I got a car in my driveway that I could have got for five thousand less if I just shopped around the right way. Uh, I did just mention Auto Trader. Auto Trader's on our list, Alex. Yeah. Auto Trader is one of our marketplaces. It's one of the marketplaces we shop on. It's just like a Walmart. It's just like a Amazon.com. Auto Trader is a big one. We 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 definitely don't skip any used car marketplace now we don't use auto tempest because auto tempest pulls and aggregates some data from other from other people's websites they're not their own marketplace so they can't get all the data so that's why i don't use them i just we just go direct to the marketplaces themselves because no company has the rights to market everyone's product and so as long as no company has the right to market everyone's products the only way we're going to see all the product is by being on all the marketplaces. But I show y'all how to do this quick. This shouldn't take you more. Look, y'all, this is going to sound crazy, but it shouldn't take you more than sixty minutes, nine, you know, ninety minutes to get your best deal on a car. No, ninety tops, tops. Not only do I want y'all saving thousand, I want y'all to save time. Deciding what you want, shopping, test driving, that takes time. That's fun. Getting the deal, that should not take you more than 60 to 90 minutes when you learn how to get bids, okay? And the more you stick around, the more you use what I teach, you're going to make deals and save more money in, in like less time. I don't want to spend more than 60, 90 minutes getting my car deal, and I don't. All right. Uh, I have been said planning to get a new car. ASAP, what are the steps to prepare that you would suggest? Well, first thing is to know whether you're buying a lease. Let's go into this game. All right, let's let's go into this game. Thanks for reminding me. Now let's let's this is a game that I've done this on in some master classes. This is also um this is also in Cars from Home University, uh, my video library. So what I want to show y'all is I want to show y'all this this game I like to call Who's Winning. Okay. This is why. Now listen. We gonna we get ready to make some people mad at the at 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 uh some people. You I don't want y'all to get mad, but once y'all see this, y'all are gonna be mad at some people who taught y'all bad information that about leasing and it's cost y'all money. This is always step one. Now I'm getting calls from Facebook. How could any this is so weird? I don't get how the heck I'm I have my phone on do not disturb and I'm and I'm still getting calls. That is so weird to me. Um, Got to figure that out. So bear with us, Instagram. Instagram is always the one that has to bear with us, you know. Uh, but all right. So this is what what we're doing here. And look, go to YouTube or go to Facebook and watch the rebroadcast. Rob Ruth said, "Where do I purchase the book?" Everybody who wants to purchase the book and get the seventy five percent off. If you're on Instagram or TikTok. Go to my bio, click the picture of me, go to my bio, you'll see a link, and then you'll see 75% off. Grab it. You won't even leave the broadcast, so you don't have to worry. You'll be right here. You'll still be able to hear me. And then if you're on YouTube, or you can go to Deshaun'sBook.com. If you're on Facebook, go to Deshaun's Book, or you can scan the QR code. So what we're about to do, I want y'all to, I'm going to ask y'all a question. We're going to go down the road, and we're going to compare two different people here, people who buy a car and people who lease. This is step one. Before you think about how much you're getting for the, how much you're going to pay, your budget, 
Um, any of the things, do I have down payment credit? Before we think about any of that, I want y'all to, I want y'all to know what the most important question is. That's leasing versus buying. So on this screen, I'm comparing a person who leases and got a brand new $40,000 Jeep Grand Cherokee 2024. Now, y'all want y'all to look at this if you want Facebook and Instagram. I mean, if you're on Facebook or YouTube, this person with a good lease deal is paying $500 a month, $500 a month for a brand new $40,000 car. Now, the person who purchases, some of y'all know every $5,000 on a loan is about $100 per month. So if you're looking at a $40,000 car, you're looking at about $800 per month on a five-year loan. Now, I got this person in here on a six-year loan at $675 a month. That's how much this car costs. Six-year loan, 3.99%. $675 per month. Let me ask you all a question. Looking at this screen, who's winning so far? Two people drive off the lot in a brand new Jeep Grand Cherokee. They have the exact same vehicle. One is white, one is gray. One person's paying $500 a month. They're leasing it. One person's paying $675 to, to buy it, $675 for six years. Who's winning, the lease or the purchase? Put L or P. We're just, we're just talking about literally we just drove off the dealership. You sitting in this car next to me. We got the same truck. I'm paying $500 a month. You purchased it. You're paying $675. Who's winning? The, the lease. Exactly. If, if you're saying purchase, you're missing it. You and me are in the same car. I'm leasing the same car as you for $500 a month. You're paying $675 a month. Same exact car. Who's winning? Exactly. See, Rob, and this, this, these are the things where we can't look. There isn't no, the purchaser is not winning. It's not. No, it depends. We, we, we have to go straight up. We have to go straight up by the numbers. See, that's where we get, that's where we lose at. We lose with all of this subjective, oh, well, it depends on how we look. No, no. You're driving a 2024 Jeep Grand Cherokee. I'm driving the same vehicle as you. I lease it, and every month, $500 comes out of my household. Every month, $675 comes out of your household. We have the same exact car. Who's winning? The lease. Exactly. That's what we got. We're going to go down the road. And listen, go subscribe to YouTube. Watch the when we we're gonna syndicate these episodes. So you might be watching the syndication. It doesn't change the value. I want you to see that five hundred dollars a month coming out of someone's household is a hundred seventy five dollars less than 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 six seventy five. So the person who leased so far is a hundred seventy five dollars per month richer. Every month, the person who's leasing over here is $175 per month richer. Now let's go to the next slide. Now, three years later, person wants to buy. Person wants to buy. Now here's the thing about the purchase. There's, a, there's an amount you owe. On a six-year loan, they would owe $24,000 at the end of three years. I've already done it. You can watch this. That's how much the balance on their loan would be. It would be $23,400. So that's the amount they need to break even on the car. Now, mind you, they've already spent $175 per month more than the person who leased. So they're $6,300 poorer. You can see they're $6,300 poorer. See, I want you all to see that everything that you're doing when you're not leasing is trying to catch up to the person who got a great lease deal. Everything from the moment you purchase, you're putting so much money out into the car compared to the people who get great lease deals that now your only goal is to catch up to them. This is why this is step one right here. Go to YouTube, watch it on YouTube so you can get the whole the whole view. Um, 
So 675, 500. Now, in order for now, this vehicle, y'all, is 40,000 brand new. What is a three year old vehicle worth? After what is if it was 40,000 brand new, what is it worth after three years? 40,000 is it is a fair estimate 24,000? I tried to look at what I believe a fair estimate is for a three year old vehicle resale value. If I per if we purchase a vehicle for for 40,000 in three years, when we go to trade it, 36,000 miles. Is it fair that that vehicle, a fair estimate is about $24,000? You're not getting 28. Let's be honest here. We're not buying a vehicle for 40, coming back and get 28 three years later. So here's the problem. When we get 20, you're not getting 28. There's And, and don't let the last two, three years of having high resale values confuse y'all. Don't do that. You will destroy yourself. You don't want to. There, there is no class, Solomon. There is no class. This is the class. Just, 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 just tune in and lock in. Like this is serious financial education that that is going to be simple if you just focus on it. If you buy a vehicle for forty, the average that you're going to see that vehicle when you go trade it in is you get about twenty four on. That is going to be a good cash resale value. And that's what that's what happens to most people. And as you can see, they still owe if you, if you, if they're if your vehicle's only worth twenty three thousand four hundred. I mean, if your if your vehicle's only worth twenty four, but you owe twenty three four, twenty three thousand four hundred, you're you're breaking even. This is this is nothing. The the like, I've already spent so much more than the person leasing. And now when I go to trade my car in, I'm not even able to get enough money to catch up to them. I'm not able to get, see, I'm $6,300 behind the person who leased when you purchase. And I'm not able, I'd have to get all that money back to make it worth it to have bought. That's why y'all, when you buy your cars and trade in, you notice how much you always worry about how much you're going to get for the car. Y'all notice that if you're a person and you buy your cars and you keep them two, three, four, five, six years, you notice how you're always worried about, man, that's all you're giving me for my car? That's all you're giving me? Nah, you got to give me more than that. You know who doesn't worry about that? Keepers. Anybody in here who buys a car, keeps it till the wheels fall off, you never worry about what the car is worth, right? Because you're using all that value. That's what we do when we purchase. But here with a lease, you're always behind. If you purchase a brand new car compared to a person who leases, you're always behind. You can't catch up with them. You're paying too much money. So this is a this is an intro. We didn't even talk about the fact. What if the person has an accident? And I really got. I really like wish that y'all could see this on 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 YouTube. And and uh, can y'all see the screen on Instagram? I don't know. Are y'all able to see the uh, slides on Instagram? We y'all. I, I don't know what what view y'all have on Instagram, but we're not talking about if the fact if the person has an accident. If the person has an accident in in the car that they own, you lose two two grand of your value. So the buyer is always behind. Now we can go down the road. When we go down the road, you'll see that eventually the person starts catching up, but it's only after eight years. You can't catch up to somebody who's paying $175 a month less than you to drive the same car as you. That money just keeps adding up. And we were taught that we're supposed to purchase, but only if you're long term. That is when you purchase eight years, nothing more. All right. So I got to see how I could. I, I'll, um, I'll probably try to do this. And go deeper when I can get some. It's hard to do it because they can't. You know, everybody can't see it. So just watch the watch the uh, watch the watch the watch the uh, replay of it, and you'll be able to see it. But this is this is this is the difference, y'all. Uh, Queen Mama said, "I'm a keeper, and I need to break. I need I need a break from car payment." See, but but let me ask you. Can I ask y'all a real question? Why are car payments the only payments we need a break from? Let me ask y'all a very real question because
car payments we need a break from, but we're okay with cell phone payments. We're okay with insurance payments. We're okay with car insurance payments. We're okay with, you know, this is like a cost of living. And I don't have a problem when it comes to financially, I want to pay cash for a car and I'm just going to keep my debt down and I'm going to make sure that, you know, the interest rates are high right now. So I'm not going to look to borrow. I'm just going to pay cash. That's fine. Paying cash as a as a savvy move is like the bank's money is too expensive. I'm not investing. Uh, you know, I'm not investing my money in anything. I'm just going to pay cash. But why are car payments the only ones that we it's the only payment we look and say, well, I want to avoid that. We don't do it with houses. We don't do it with we don't do it with anything else in life. And sometimes it makes us get a bad car because we like, oh, I'm just going to save up eight thousand dollars. I'm just going to say. Meanwhile, if we knew how to properly structure our deals, we can get the best car for our budget under our budget. Because y'all know all cash is is saved up payments, right? You know, all people be like, oh, I'm going to pay cash. You know, if you save up twenty thousand dollars. That's just a bunch of saved up payments. Yeah, she said, I'm tired of house payments too. I understand. And again, if we have the cash and we can go and we can, look, in, I'm going to teach you how to pay cash for cars if it makes sense. And if you have cash, that's great. We got to make sure we get the best price on the car. But at the same time, you need to know when it doesn't make sense to pay cash. If, 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 they're, doing one, if they're doing 0% financing on the car you want, why would we why wouldn't we use the bank's money at zero percent and let our money continue to make money or or continue to keep our cash free? So again, because there's nothing to justify it. There's nothing to make to make it make sense. Oh, I don't I don't want car payments. I, I don't want any of the payments that I have in my in my life. But my goal is to get the best, you know, the best out of what I'm paying for. Um but yeah, it's it's a lot that goes into it. You got to make sure that those pay. If you, yeah, that's why y'all we got to shop below our budget. I need a break from rent. Yeah, we got to shop below our budget. Look, when we get when we when we let people talk us into cars that are above our payments goals, that are above our monthly expense goals. Oh, now we get tired of them. But if your if your monthly budget was five hundred and you went in and you left with a great car at four fifty four twenty five, you ain't really tired of that payment. You're, you're tired of the payment, right? Like you're tired of the payment that's 700 when you really didn't want to go above 650. Now you're like, Dad, I'm paying 700 for this car. Dad, this, I'm getting tired of this. When you're under, you don't get tired when you're under your budget. You get what I'm saying? Does that does that make sense? Type type of type of um, type of uh, I don't know dollar sign if that makes sense. We only get tired of payments when they're over our budget. When they're comfortably within our budget, we're never tired of them. That's why we, we, we're we fine. So, but we got to learn how to get the best cards for our budget. And that comes through multiple bids. You have no idea. And, and then it comes through leasing versus buying, which is what we've been talking about in this initial thing. You know, in this initial thing, I got to, I'll try to get everybody on one, one stream you know, where, where y'all could all see, because because I really want to focus on the people who can see the slides. And, you know, because I know I could engage with them because they can see the slides and then but but it's people who can't. So that's all right. We'll continue to adjust. But you got to know. Believe me when I tell you, thousands of people have learned that the biggest issue of affordability for the cars that they're driving was the fact that they didn't understand leasing. Leasing is going to get you 30, 40% more car for the same money when you learn how to get great lease deal. All day long. So if I'm, again, it's people who driving a daggone $50,000 car, they got a $900, $1,000, $1,100 a month payment. At the same time, it's people driving $50,000 cars. And look, this is their payment. I'm going to show y'all something that's going to blow your mind. You can't believe that this is a payment on a car. Right here, look, Greg. Greg is in our Facebook group. He's in our Cars from Home University program. He said, my first time posting here. 
His MSRP on his car that he got, it's a Kia EV6 win with the tech package. $56,275 car, y'all. $56,000. That vehicle, if you, if he went in there and said, I want to purchase that, you know, man, I'm not leasing nothing. You know, I'm just, how much is it? That vehicle is $1,100 a month on its best day. Five-year loan, $1,100 a month. If he stretches out the loan six years, maybe it's 1000 a month. I don't ever recommend you go above a six-year loan. When we get into structuring our deal, y'all going to hear me talk about the rule of 72, 10th birthday. We we don't want ever want to go above a six-year loan. It's very risky, and it's a, sign, we, it's a sign of affordability. We can't afford the car. It's like a 40-, 50-year mortgage. So the point is, if he walks in to get that car, he's leaving with a $1,000 car payment. Same car. Look at what he got, y'all. Shopping multiple offers. The dealer that won the bid, his payment is $527 a month. 527 a month. He gave him first month's payment and he drove off. He said no other dealer came close. This is, see, some people may have shopped that car and said, Deshaun, I, I was shopping a lease for that car. They was telling me it's 800 a month. Absolutely. That's normal because the, bet, the, the overpriced de dealers that we don't buy from are going to take their shots. But in order for us to see that, wait, this car is not really 800. The best deal on this car is 527. We have to shop multiple offers. Now, it's not always going to be that dramatic, but I promise y'all, when y'all shop multiple offers, it's going to blow your mind. The best deal to the worst deal is going to be three to $5,000 different. And you're going to see that some of the dealers that you've trusted the most, that you've been buying from, maybe your family, your family been buying cars from them, some of them may be the ones to take the biggest shot at you. So you have to shop multiple offers. But how does, y'all see how there's no comparison to that deal Greg just got? 527 a month, another person is driving the exact same vehicle paying 900. This is how, when y'all see these videos of that, people, average car payment is $1,000. How? Because they don't understand leasing. They don't understand leasing. Once you understand leasing, you'll understand how these people are getting jammed up and how you may have gotten jammed up in a high car payment for a car that you don't even, that you might feel like, Yo, I'm paying way too much money for this car. And then the opposite side is if we are purchasing, we have to make sure we are getting the best price for the car and we are getting our the best interest rate we can get. Does he lease the buy? No, we don't do lease the buys. We don't mix the two. Leasing is its own benefit. That's a great question. Great question. Let me put my uh, let me put the banner back up for those of you who want to get the book. See, if you don't want to have to remember all of this, grab your book. My book, my new book is called Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping. It's digital, so you could download it, be literally using it in two minutes, and just go to Deshaun'sBook.com. It's seventy-five percent off for our, for our grand uh, for our launch. And you can get your uh, and you can get your copy. If you're on Facebook, or if you're on Instagram or TikTok, you could go right to my bio, click the link in my bio, get your copy while it's 75 percent off. Price goes back up to ninety seven dollars, I think, after 30 minutes. All right. So your payment is over eleven hundred now. And, and look, that means you your, your your loan is probably somewhere around 60 grand or more. Depends on how how much the. Um, it depends on what your term was. So if your payment was eleven hundred a month, you know, on a five year term, that's a sixty thousand dollar loan. That's a that's about a fifty five hundred dollar loan on, on a five year term. So you 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 want to look at other ways to acquire that car. Is there a way that I could have been in this car for less money? Now, watch this. Um, uh, Gigaware. Because, he, I, I, you know, he's being honest, my payments over is eleven hundred. If you are buying that car and your intention is to keep it, and that means your intention is to keep it for eight plus years, you're going to pay off that car and then you're going to just, you know, start to catch. You, you, once you don't have a car payment, you can start to catch up to the person who leased because the person who leases is always going to have a payment. That's the downside about leasing. There is no opportunity for you to pay off the car and you don't want to. Again, it's not like when 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 you're not keeping cars long enough, 
you're 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 getting great lease deals. It's not the goal is not to pay off the car. The car, the goal is to drive the most car I can for the least amount of money. That's the goal with a lease. The goal with a purchase is to now pay off the car and start to now keep the car long enough for the depreciation to cool off. Depreciation is the value that it loses every year. Thank you, Becky. Good to see you as well. Long time. Great to see you. So depreciation is the value the car loses every year. When you buy a brand new car, you lose 20% the first year. Then you lose 15%. Then you lose 15%. Then you lose 12%. Then you lose 10%. And as you keep the car longer, it gets to a point where you're only losing 5% or so a year. But you must keep that car long enough to get to that point. And what many of you have been taught to do, you may have been taught to, man, I buy my cars and then I'm replacing them in three years. I'm replacing them in five years. Now, you know, I'm replacing my cars when they're losing the most value. That's not when you want to replace a car. You want to you now bought the car. It's losing value like crazy for the first six, seven years. Now, perfect. It's going to cool off now. It's paid off now. Now I can start to recoup some of all that money that I put into that car. But most people don't do that. You may have been taught, I just go and get another car and I start the process all over again. So not only are you never getting to benefit, not only are you always having a payment anyway, you're not getting the benefit from all the money that you're putting into these cars. You're never allowing the depreciation to cool off to where you got no car payment and you just got a car out there and you can stack some of this money up. It just happens all the time. It's an issue of not understanding leasing. Leasing is for short-term people less than eight years. Purchasing is for long-term people more than eight years. And don't worry, we'll, con we'll continue to go deep on this. All in the book. So anywhere, any, anybody who wants to really know this and have it all in one place so they can use it, if you're shopping for a car now or in the next 12 months, you need this stuff right now. You know, I got tons of videos all over all my Facebook pages. Um, but if you want all the information in one spot, get your book at 75% off. Just make sure that it's not showing the $97 price. Whenever you click to the website, make sure it's showing the 75% off price. So you can purchase off the bank loan. Uh, so you can purchase off the bank loan. I don't know what you mean by that, Skinner. Is it smart to lease and then buy it out? No, see, and, and again, that's a very common question. Yo, what's the benefit of that? I mean, somewhere along the lines, we heard about leasing, leasing to buy. We don't want to, you're only leasing because you don't want to buy the car. You're buying the car because you want to keep it and take care of it for the long run. I see you, Dr. Coop. Congratulations. I, she said, I got the book. Enjoy it. Use it. Don't read it. Use it. And, you know, I really can't wait to hear your success story. There's no reason. Look, when I'm going into a lease and you got to have this in your tool belt, some of you, your children are not going to keep a car eight years. You're going to need to set them up to get a great lease. Yeah, you might be a person who like Deshaun. I just buy my car, man. I keep it 10 years. If that's you, type K for keeper. Most times, if you buy your car, you keep them 10 years, type K in the comments for keeper. Thanks, Ambi. So keep killing it. Appreciate you. If you are, the book is called Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping. It's in my TikTok bio and it's in my Instagram bio. But I think you only got, it's 30 minutes. You could get it for 75% off. While everybody is on, you could get it 75% uh, off. Okay, so Keeper. Keepers, you are not, you, you, you're you not worried. Uh, it, it, that's when you buy. When I'm going into lease, I'm not thinking about keeping. I'm not mix. We don't want to mix the two. Leasing is I'm going to get a great lease deal where I drive a brand new car for pennies compared to purchasing or, or you know, for a small percentage compared to purchasing. That is a lease. My goal is not to buy the car. It's not to buy the car. You you and, and, and see the key, when we keep we win. When we lease, we win, as long as we're getting good deals. But it's people who are mixing the two, and that might be you, and that's where we lose. We buy, and then we trade. We buy, and then we sell it in two years, three years, four years. 
we tired of it. Oh, I'm gonna go. Yeah, I'm gonna go switch out of this. That's mixing. The other one is you lease and then you purchase the lease. So you lease your vehicle and then you go buy it at the end. That is mixing. You don't want to mix because the benefits of leasing are laid out. The benefits of purchasing are laid out. Very clear, separate benefits. When you mix the two strategies, you lose the benefits. And again, most people who would tell you they bought their lease, they're buying it with a five or six year loan when they've already been paying three years to lease it. The lease is three years. The loan is five years. That's eight years. And I'm going to tell you all how this happened, how I figured out this was so bad. I'm going to be honest with you. I was in the dealership one day. Somebody comes in. They're like, hey, I want to um, I want to replace my car. So I go out and I look at the car. I ask them what they owe. Um, no, I don't think I asked them what they owe. They come to the dealership. They say, yeah, I got a car out there. I want to I want to trade it in for, for a new car. And I'm like, OK, that's pretty, you know, pretty normal. Let's take a look. Here's what happens. I can see, I say, what year is it? And they'll say, well, it's a 2018. I'm just using like a real example. Like they say, oh, it's a 2018. Now I'll ask them, how long have you had it? And they'll say, well, I bought it. I bought it brand new. So I've had it five years, six years. Now, follow me, y'all. Everybody on here, I want your opinion on this. Person comes up and says, they've had a car for six years. They bought it brand new. They've been paying on that car for six years. Don't you think that car should be paid off by now or almost paid off? Yes or yes. Type Y if you understand. Person bought it six years ago. You go out and I'm like, okay, mister, how, how, you know, how long have you had it? They're like, I've had it for six years. So I'm like, okay, perfect. Everybody's saying yes. So this is what I'm thinking. This is how I found out buying your lease was a bad idea for most people, if not all. So I go and I say, okay, great. I see you're here trading. Now, in my mind, I'm already trained to talk to him about leasing because, thank you, Brent. I know you're here trading this car in in six years. I want to show you what leasing looks like, and you're going to love that a lot better. You're not going to need this down payment. I'm going to be able to give you a check back for this equity in this car you got here. It's going to be all good. And I've helped some people do that. They come in and I show them the lease and I'm like, you know, you keep just trading your cars. But if you lease, here's what, boom, that you could do. And then I'll give you this, you know, you get a big check back for your, your balance of your old car, all of that. So this is the, this is when it works, it's beautiful. But when it doesn't work, this is what it looks like. I'm like, I run and I'm like, okay, your car is worth about $15,000. Instagram just logged me out. Instagram just logged me out out of nowhere. I don't know what happened. Let's see if I could go back. All right. So now when it doesn't work, so I, I go out and um, I find, I, you know, the used car manager may tell me this car is worth 15000 and I'm like, okay, perfect. It's probably paid off. Great. He's going to get like a check back for like um, almost all that and then he's going to have a low payment. He's going to love this. So I find out when I call a bank, I say, how much you owe? He says, well, I don't really know. I call a bank. I'm like, okay, I'm calling for Mr. Jones payoff on his, you know, such and such car. And the bank says, okay, yes, the payoff is uh, $15,000. I'm like, wait, 15000 How could he still owe 15000 This doesn't make sense. I look at him and I say, the bank is saying you still owe 15000 on the car. And I'm like, he's like, yeah, OK, yeah, I didn't know how much I had owed. I said, wait a minute. Didn't you tell me that you you had this car since it was new? Yeah. And you told me you had it for six years. Yeah. How do you still owe? Good. And he said, oh, I leased it first, though. What I did was I leased it for three years and then I, I had bought it at the end. And I'm like, there we go. That's the problem. You leased it for three years. Most people, when they're buying their lease, they're going to put a six-year loan on it, which means six years later, from the day you bought it, from the day you originally leased it, six years later, you've been making payments 
and you still have two more years of payments left. That's actually, I'm wrong, that's nine, three years of payments left. It happens all the time. So I, I literally, y'all, smart people on here, you'd never take a nine year loan, right? Type never. You never take a nine year loan. If you're enjoying, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed already, we got we still got probably five, four, five hundred people on here throughout all the platforms. If you whatever platform you're on, make sure you're following us because this is the stuff we do. You would never, right? You would never take a nine year loan. But the same adamant we the we're adamant we'd never take a nine year loan. We got to see every single time. Thank you so much. I appreciate the gifts on TikTok and all the platforms. We got to take every time we hear about buying our lease out, unless we're going to pay cash for it, which is another discussion. But most people are not. They're they're going to take a five or six year loan out. So as soon as you hear lease to buy, as soon as you think lease to buy, I want you to think eight or nine years of payments. On the same car. That's why it's a bad idea. That's why it's a horrible idea. Okay. Now, if you are comparing, we had somebody in our group yesterday who was asking about buying his lease out because he's going to give the car to his parents and because they're going to keep it long term. And the value of the car compared to the value of a similar used car is a great deal. That's different. Buy it. Because all you're doing when you're buying your lease is you're buying a used car. It's just, it's your car. <laughs> I used to get help people buy their lease. Hey, they come out of the office. We switch the plates because we got to re-register the car. And I'm like, okay, so how was it? Now, they just signed up for a five-year loan, six-year loan on a car that they've already been in for three years. They're not really excited about it. <laughs> you know, I've had the car for three years. At least when you go buy a used car, you're excited about it. You're excited. Oh, nice. It's new to me. But when you buy your lease out, you're not really excited. Thank you, man. Y'all going crazy with these gifts and everything. I appreciate it. So these are the things like what I want y'all to have, as long as you stick with me and you learn what I teach, you're going to have clear boundaries that you operate in that always protect you. That's the name of the game. There's clear things I do. There's clear things I don't do. I know I have rules, I have boundaries, and what I want y'all to get familiar with is the eight-year rule. The eight-year rule is the first rule. It says if you're not keeping your car eight years, you should not be buying it. You can't outlive the depreciation. You cannot outlive the depreciation compared to someone who purchases. Now, it's too much to go deep on right now. We'll go, we'll go we'll go deep because some I know some people thinking oh Deshaun, but if I pay cash for a brand new car, I pay less overall. Yeah, but if you pay cash for a brand new car, you're still laying out all the money. You're still laying out all the money, and you're still trying to get that back. You're still oh I paid thirty grand, forty grand, fifty grand. Do you understand that a person who leases that same car, who what would you rather be? Big dog who thinks you're big dog because you're going to write a $50,000 check or a person who comes in and says, I'm going to get that car for 500 a month. Do I want 50 grand coming out of my bank account going into a car or do I want $500 every month? It's much more. Uh, it's, it's a much more pleasant feeling to give a bank $500 every month to drive their $40,000 car than it is to say, okay, you want this $40,000 car, then you come give us a check for the whole amount and the taxes and everything. Now I'm taking the check out, boom. And again, there are situations where that's right, but I want you, you may have been somebody who's like, yeah, but I, I don't think it's right for me. And that's okay. That's okay. I'm not one of these people that's going to make y'all feel like you are wrong by using leverage and not learning how to creatively acquire cars where it's a little bit of money coming out of your bank account every month versus what people have told y'all and how you should be buying cars. Thought, thoughts about leasing luxury vehicles. It doesn't change, Dr. Uh, uh, Tobert. That's a great question. He said, what are your thoughts about leasing luxury cars? Same principle, eight-year rule. I don't care whether you're leasing a G-Wagon, whether, whether it's a Bentley you're looking at, 
whether you're looking at a, a Toyota Corolla, the eight-year rule is what applies. Because the eight-year rule takes into account the depreciation. If you look and say, that's a car I'm keeping for eight years or more, you buy it. If you if that's a car you're not keeping eight years, you are, you're going to see you're, you'll pay thousands less and drive a better car leasing it. Even if you try to buy it used. So I'll need more than one broadcast to really go deep on this. Um, I'm just getting familiar with how to use all of these tools uh, where I can show you all stuff. But um, we'll go we'll, we'll continue to go deep on this. This is not a subject. If you've gotten bad years and years of bad advice, it's not always some of you get a breakthrough immediately. And some of you, it takes more time because, again, you've been it's been beaten to your head and people with loud voices who shout tell you this is what you do or you never do this. Or you always do it like this. You know, like who's heard somebody say never buy a used car? I mean, never buy a new car. Always buy used. Who's heard that? Type of you for used. If you were taught, you always get a used car. You should never get a new car. Who who who's taught that? And we got a couple more minutes. We'll 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 stay on. We'll do some more questions. As long as y'all continue to share the broadcast and continue to stay tuned in, I see we still got hundreds of people on. Then we'll continue. All right. Now let me tell y'all how. Let me tell. See. You either have to teach something that works for everybody or what you teach will mess people up. If somebody says to y'all, yo, every single one of you should be buying used cars because that's what they'll say. Never buy a new car. Everybody on here should be buying a used car. So that means you think everybody in the country should be buying used cars, right? Yeah, absolutely. Nobody should buy a new car. Nobody in this whole country should buy a new car. Like, no, no, always buy a used car. Okay, perfect. So let's just say if you had your wish, everybody in the country would be buying used cars, right? Because that'd be better for them, right? Yes. If I had my wish, everybody would be buying used cars. Then here's my question. How do they become used cars then? How do they become used cars if everyone is buying used cars? I want y'all to think about this. If you had your wish, you could snap your finger, Mr. Financial Advisor, whatever you teach. How could everyone buy used cars? It's impossible. The cars have to, the cars come in new. <laughs> they don't just, so if everybody was buying used cars, what's happening to the new cars? They're just sitting there. And then, so, that's not a practical solution. How do we acquire who should be buying brand new cars? People who are going to lease them and people who are buying new car who want to purchase, keep long term and you could afford new. That's only if, I, if some people say, Deshaun, I want to buy. I'm not lease. I want to buy. I keep my car. But should I buy new or pre-owned? That depends on budget. That depends on, beside, unless you want one specific from a year, somebody would be like, oh, I want this special year. But if, it, if it's a case of, you know what, I could afford both. Should I buy new? Should I buy pre-owned? That's a matter of budget and preference. If I could afford a new one and I can keep it long enough to outlive the depreciation, then I'll buy new. But if I can't afford to get a quality vehicle for my budget, then I'll buy pre-owned. And some people want to treat themselves. Some people are like, I only get a new car every 10 years, Deshaun. I, 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 I'm going to get something new. That's fine. That's fine. As long as it's long term, because time heals all wounds. We're killing the likes on TikTok, too. I appreciate everybody tapping the screen. Y'all still running the likes up. Appreciate it. Shout out to the subscribers. If you haven't subscribed to us on YouTube yet, please, we invite you to subscribe. This is what we'll do. You'll get notifications of when we live. So you can make sure you tapped in. Ah, I see you, Barbara. She said, I just bought the book. I appreciate everybody who got the book at 75% off. This is the launch. Um, I'm excited. As y'all saw earlier in the broadcast, we're already rated 4.94 on goodreads.com. We got 31 reviews. Um, that book, Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping, has been really changing people's lives and the way they shop. It's a tool. It's not something you read. It's something you use. So um, get your copy at Deshaun's book.com, 75% off. 
uh, or you can scan the QR code, or if you're on Instagram or TikTok, just go to my bio. And uh, as long as you're seeing this, you still should be able to get it at the 75% off price. Uh, and it's immediate download. So, um, and you'll see as you read it, there's a reason I had to make it a digital book. I couldn't print it because it links to videos. It links to, to, to uh, docs. To I got scripts that it links to. There's no way I would have been able to do it printing the book. And then also, sometimes I need to update stuff. Like Room went out of business two months ago. If I would have printed the book, now Room is, I, 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 I need to be able to update real time when something happens. And I couldn't do that with a print book. I didn't want thousands of print books out there and then something changes. And now I got to tell people, oh, no, you got to get volume two now. You know what I'm saying? Thanks, Angelina. All right. So um, Dr. Coop says, I have a paid off Toyota. I don't want to trade it. Should I have a down payment? You don't need it. Look, if you can find a deal on the vehicle you want below your budget with no down payment, then do it. You said you have a paid off Toyota. You don't want to trade it in. Now, here's a good. Now, here's what I what I ask people. You put the vehicle to use, because if you're going to go and get another vehicle. Then you're going to be paying for that vehicle. You don't really want the only people I recommend have an extra vehicle is if you're a high mileage driver. Who's a high mileage driver? You're driving over 20,000 miles a year, over 20,000 a year. Type um, HM for high mileage. The, you, these are the only people that it benefits you having a paid off car like this. So sometimes it's worth it to buy your car, pay off the first car. And here's what I like. All right. So we got a lot of high mileage drivers watching right now. So I have a strategy in the book. And what you'll hear me talk about is really two routes for high mileage drivers so that y'all can stop having all this negative equity when you come in to replace your vehicles. What typically happens with high mileage drivers, and the reason I like, I suggested them two cars, one car payment, is because they're putting so many miles on their vehicle, but your loan is a normal loan. Your loan is a five year loan or a six year loan. Those loans are made to go down for the normal or average driver. And even the average driver, is going to have negative equity on these short on these loans in the short term. Um, you, you so when you are destroying the value of your car because you're putting 20,000, 30,000 miles a year on it, it's going from being worth 20 grand one year to now it's worth 12 grand the next year because you put 30,000. You're destroying the value of it, but the loan that's attached to it is not moving. This is the this is the indicator that the loan and the purchase price or the value of the asset is totally unrelated. They're unrel they, they, they don't they don't matter. That's why you have to make sure you get a good price on the asset. You can't just pay attention to what is my loan doing because your loan doesn't tell you what you're really in the car for. So check it out. You now are putting all this mileage on your car. You come in in four years and you're like, hey, you know what? Car got 200,000 miles on it now. Let me go ahead and trade this thing in. Problem is 200,000 miles, you still got two years left on the loan. You still owe 15 grand. You still owe 12,000. You still owe 20,000. And you are now seriously hurting your value, your, your, your next deal. Because all that baggage you got, got to come to this next deal. The solution to stay out of that is to make sure that you are having either, I, I teach you the two routes. Well, the third is really just be a long-term person. You could drive 30,000 miles a year. And if I'm a long-term person, I'll just have 300,000 miles on my car in 10 years. And then I just go switch it. It's, it's keepers here that's long-term people, high mileage drivers, and they get their car. That thing got 250,000 miles. It's mostly highway. And in eight, nine, 10 years, they go and they replace it. No need to lease. Again, continuing theme, long term, don't think about leasing. Because some people who just tune in and they catch a brief, oh, is this a, so everybody should lease? No, that's what I'm trying to tell y'all. Long term people, long term purchase, you buying a car for your kid in college and they're like, yeah, I'm going to keep that thing for 10 years, man. You know, I'm boring. Great. But most kids are not. They're like, hey, when I get my job, when I turn 24, I'm probably going to want something different. So if you're not a long term person, you should be purchasing. But I mean, you should be leasing. But going back to the high mileage, y'all, this is how it works. 
if you the two strategies for high mileage drivers is to have one separate car you pay that thing off and now that becomes your mileage car and you go and lease a nice car this is how this is beautiful this prevents you from having two car payments and this allows you to have a nice car that you're not destroying so you pay off that first car if you're going to go this route, your first deal is a purchase because you're going to get that first car, pay it off, could be new, could be used, but it must be quality. Pay it off. And as soon as that car is paid off, now I go lease my nice car. So I might be putting a high mileage on that first car I'm buying. But once I go lease my nice car, now I got a, a payment over here. My nice car is over here. And this is what I take out to dinner. This is when I want to go out and have a good time. I don't want a car that I'm just always putting, you know, 30,000 miles a, a year on. I, now I split it. And this has allowed so many high mileage drivers to continually be able to predict what they're going to put in these cars because now they can't. You cannot predict how much y'all are spending on these cars, high mileage drivers. Y'all are losing so much on resale value. Your loans are just so high. And they're moving slow you don't know how much you are losing but i break it down for you it's thousands you can't destroy the value of a car and then go trade it it follows you so that's one strategy second is a high mileage lease second is straight up first time i experienced this i had a guy came in and he was bringing back a lease with seventy five thousand miles on it and i asked him i said man i didn't even know and that's my ignorance I was selling cars and I didn't even know that that was available. And I said, let me ask you a question. How long you been doing these, 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 like, what do you do? He's like, uh, I'm in sales. Like I, I do 25,000 miles a year, every year. I said, okay, wow. That's, and, and you lease your car. He said, yeah. Cause I already know what a good lease deal is. I just didn't really in, take into account back then. This is probably 2015. I didn't take into account a high mileage, good lease deal. And when he told me what his payment was, and he said, yeah, I come back 75,000 miles. I drop that thing off. I pay my payment every month. Now he might, here's the thing. He might only be paying 150 or $200 a month more for his super high mileage. But here's, that's much better than him destroying, buying the cold car, destroying the value, coming back and trying to trade it with 10, 15 grand negative equity. So strategy, you are not really purchasing cards with strategy until leasing and purchasing is in your tool belt and you know when to use which. For your family, not just you, for your family. It's not just you. All right, so um, great questions, great questions. So this is the type of stuff that's in the book. Everything's in the book. Whether you see me live, whether you see me on social media making videos, you're going to get all the information. You don't have to worry about, oh, Deshaun is you know, holding back information. It's not. Now, access to me, yes, I have access. I have a Cars from Home University where I coach people personally and we work together. That's access. But as far as the information, the information's out there. It's how you want the information. We'll get it to you anyway. If you want it all in one spot, get the book, get car shopping for people that hate car shopping. Download it now. It's 75% off. Scan the QR code or go to Deshaun'sBook.com or go to my Instagram or TikTok bio and get your 75% off copy. But um, but other than that, you don't have to worry about not having the information. See, what you all have had to deal with is how do we make great car deals? How do we not pay penalties when we don't have the information? But now the information's here. It's here for you. It's just you got to decide, how do I want the information? Do I want to look through all Deshaun's video? I got a video on every topic. More videos to come. They're not in order. And they're for different people. Some of you are going to purchase used cars. Some of you are going to lease. Some of you are going to buy a new car. Some of you are going to pay cash. Some of you have good credit. Some of you don't. So throughout all those videos, you got to sort through that. In the book, you're only following one path. When I do videos, when I do a book, it's like one path. Let's stay focused so that we can keep you on track. That's why it's step by step. Yeah, that's 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 how that's how the book is designed. All right. How do you purchase a vehicle without proof of income? Um, That's tough. You need other things that are going to weigh. You know, that's a good question. Um, So if you don't have proof of income, you, you, you credit profile gets you approved, not credit score. So proof of income 
is usually only required when you have a lower score or you have a new company, new business, um, and they need some type of way to, you know, try to you know, make sure they're going to be all right recouping their money. How is this car going to be paid? So um, if I didn't have proof of income, um, then I got to work on credit. I got to work on credit or I got to have a lot of cash. And even then, what's the reason we don't have proof of income? Once I know that, I could better I, I could better explain. What's the reason we don't have proof of income? Seems dealers don't care about mileage if you release with them. That's now good, good time. So now watch this, y'all. This comment just came in. We'll still cycle through all the comments. I, we we got we we got another couple little while in this hour. We getting through as much as we get through. Um, some it's, it's good good time on YouTube said you know seems dealers don't care about mileage if you re release with them. Absolutely a mirage. I asked y'all earlier who's had somebody say a dealer say oh we'll take care of the old payments we'll take care of the mileage penalty. It's absolutely not true. And since 2006, here's the only time, shout out to y'all running the likes up on TikTok. I appreciate it. Y'all keep running them up. Thank you so much. Shout out to the sharers. I've never, could everybody who shares good information, just hit the share button wherever you're at and share with somebody if, you, if you're in this sharing. So I've never seen mileage taken care of, ever. No program, no bank, no leasing company, and we've done thousands of transactions. I've never seen a leasing company say, we'll forgive mileage, never. So that does not happen. Mileage penalties get, let's say we calculate a $2,000 mileage penalty, that gets rolled over to your next lease deal and we're working that lease deal with that $2,000 accounted for. So whatever the deal is we're working you, now, perfect, here's what it is, make sure that $2,000 penalty is in there. You pay for that, you pay for that. Now, in some cases, very rare, there's loyalty programs where they waive some payments. Mercedes used to have this. It's since gone away, and they didn't have it on every vehicle. They didn't run it every month, where if you lease another Mercedes, we'll cover three of your old payments. So you could get out three months early, no penalty, but it had to be waived. Since I got, in, since I got into the business, I've heard dozens of people sitting around me say, we are going to be waiving those, but we're going to be taking care of those payments. Mm -mm. Are you waiving the payments? Or what do you mean by that? Are you waiving the payments? See that, and we, we when you, you ask them that question, I, I don't want you to even go in looking to get out early. I'd rather you know what the deal, what your deal is so you can shop from home the way I teach, where no one has to reveal that information to you. No one is... If you got the right strategy, you're never putting yourself in a position where someone can lie to you without you knowing it. So if you go in the old way and you go into one dealer and say, hey, I'm looking to get my you know, new lease and I got like penalties, and they'll say, okay, we'll take care of it. That's putting yourself in position to be lied to. Oh, we took care of that. We built in the payment. Yeah, all the payments are taken care of. This is your new payment. Mm -mm. When we shop, when we take control of our deal, that's not something someone's telling us. That's something we already know, because when we're over on mileage, we got to we, we always want to see how much can we sell the car for. I was over mileage on my Jeep, sold it, still made money. Still made money. There's plenty of people who go over on their mileage and can still sell their lease and make a lot of money. Make up that even if they break even, they avoid the penalty. So first is always to do our equity assessment and see how much we can sell the car for. And if we can sell it, we avoid the penalty. And then we're choosing payments. Do we get out early? Do we make the payment? You see, when you get you getting out of your lease early, unless you sell the vehicle, y'all, you can't get out of your lease early. You're breaking a contract. So I don't want y'all in the in the in the I don't want y'all using language or comfortable with language that costs you money because you've heard people say this for years. Oh, I'm just gonna get out of this. No, you're gonna get out of it and you're gonna pay penalties for that. So because they've taught us or you've been taught, oh, you can get out, no problem. You call a dealership, hey, you know what, y'all? I bought so many cars from y'all. You know, um, I know I'm supposed to keep this lease for how many years? It's supposed to be three years, Mrs. Johnson. Okay, yeah, but I'm, I'm, I think I'm ready for something new already. 
all right, well, when can you come in, Ms. Johnson? See, they're never going to say, just so you know, Ms. Johnson, if you break the lease, the penalty is going to be, you know, pretty significant because you, you, you contracted for three years and now you're getting out. So we're going to have to roll over probably about three or four or five thousand dollars to your new lease. So, no, they'll just come in, get you in. And, all right. Here's your new payment, Miss Johnson. You don't realize that I'm paying a hundred bucks more for this car than I could have been paying, paying if I just waited. But but because you, you've been taught to be a payment shopper, it, it doesn't matter to you. But somebody who's financially savvy, who's like, man, I don't want that extra hundred dollars coming out of my house for the same vehicle. You're not going to do this. So we cannot ever believe what dealers say about penalties, about, oh, we'll take care of that. We find out, can we sell our car to avoid the penalty? Or if I can't, I either got to pay the payments and get out earlier, or I'm going to stay in it and just take the mileage penalty. That's not a bad idea most times, y'all. Sometimes people will call and say, yo, I'm going over mileage. Uh, and I say, OK, well, based on how you're going over, you'll only be over by like two thousand miles. That's only five. That's only like that's only five hundred bucks. Oh, oh, I thought it was going to be more than that. Nah, you're going to be over by two thousand miles. Just you know, wait to the end. And then we'll, we'll when you get your new car, build that five hundred into the deal. And that's it. Or just pay the five hundred dollars. Because very rarely are people, oh, I was supposed to drive thirty six thousand and I'm doing one hundred. That's just, wait, something went wrong here. What the heck happened? I can see you were supposed to do 36 and you did 40. You're supposed to do 36,000 miles, you did even 45. Maybe you got a different job. But, I mean, how how we we have to structure our leases right so that we're, I mean, so if you know you're on a high, you're a high mileage driver and you take a 10,000 mile a year lease, shame on you. Like, we can't do that. We can't do that. We can, And then we, you know, some people, oh, I'll just buy it at the end. You're killing yourself. You're killing yourself. The, the, the residual value, you're going to put a ridiculous amount of money on those or a ridiculous amount of mileage on that car. And you're going to buy it in three years with 90,000 miles on it for the same buyout price that was estimated from your 10,000 mile a year lease. They estimated this buyout price is for a person who brings the car back with 30,000 miles on it. Here's the price. that, And then you bring it back with 90 and you pay the same price. Oh, I'm just going to buy it because I went over on the miles. No killing yourself you're realizing the loss so again this is why I, I i this is why I, you know we want to be in your life this is why i'm doing my best to be in your life so that you can avoid these things anybody who really wants to have somebody like we're set up we've been doing this for three years as far as a company providing education so i mean whether it's hundreds thousands dozens you know, we're set up to make sure that everybody who who, who who wants to protect themselves and get the best deals are able to do it. Uh, I, Paula, got my book. Phenomenal. Use it. Everybody that got the book, thank you. Um, you know, I appreciate you, brother. I Thank you so much, Lord. I appreciate you. Um, you know, we're going to be doing these lives regularly. I think, um, you know, this is the best format. I like to I like to come and interact and really answer questions and really show you all. You know why I want you to start treating cars, buying cars and leasing cars, treating getting cars like buying small houses. Most people treat getting cars like going to Walmart and getting a TV, big screen. You, you come back home and you're like, man, I, you, it's like you get an itch, but you get an itch for a $30,000 decision or a $10,000 decision. When you start planning out your car purchases the way I'm going to show you, and you go in with a system and a strategy, the way that's taught in my book is seven steps. First step is deciding whether you lease or buy. Seven step is delivery. So by the time you get to step seven in my book, by the time you get to step seven of what I teach, you should be picking up your car or it should be being delivered to you. So it's not about learning and reading and, and then, okay, Deshaun, I, I just read everything. I just learned everything. I just watched all the videos. Now, now I'm ready to go get my car. No, we're going to be, you learn by doing. And if I teach you a different way to shop, different things to do, by the time you get your car, you're going to be like, oh, I didn't need Deshaun to tell me what to do step one through seven. I just needed him to tell me this is step one, do that. And then when I'm done, I come back. Okay, Deshaun, I did step one. What's step two? Here's step two, do this now. Okay, perfect. Let me go on these websites, do step two. Perfect. 
just did step two, Deshaun. Perfect. Here's step three. Do this. And we found that that has been able to guarantee success for so many people. And that's how they're able to get the same deals that I get. Like this is um this lady right here, this young lady, like Tope. She got a BMW, $54,000, $54,750 BMW, putting dealers against each other. She got it for $690 a month. She got the protection plan and raised it up. Her payment on that BMW. Now, mind you, if you can see on YouTube, if you can see on Facebook, you can see this slide. $690 a month. People are paying for that $54,000 BMW. People are paying $1,100 a month. To go in and purchase that car, $54,000 is $1,100 a month with no money down because she didn't do any money down. $690. You see what I'm saying? Some of you might be looking, and quite honestly, some people may watch it because we're going to syndicate this. Whether you're watching this live on a syndication, doesn't change the value. You, you might be driving that same car, and you might be looking and saying, yo, I'm paying $1,000 a month for that car. She's paying $690. I put $8,000 down. She put no money down. We can't compare. You think you need to, you think Dave Ramsey, God forbid, and look, shout out to Dave Ramsey. I love what he teaches in terms of financial literacy. I love that he teaches people to invest and build for retirement and make sure you, I love that. But there's an area that he doesn't know what he's talking about, and that's when it comes to cars. See, I wouldn't stay, I wouldn't be step, look, Credit is a big part of what it has a lot to do with me helping you. Y'all don't hear me teaching credit. It's it's important. It, it's a complimentary topic for us to talk about. I talk cars, how to make sure you pay the least for them. Yeah, maybe natural. Let me get some credit tips too. Rodney, you could just go right to my TikTok bio, grab your book. It's at 75% off. Click the link in my TikTok bio. You think she can ever? Listen to someone that tells her you shouldn't be leasing. She knows when to lease and when to purchase. She's not in love with that vehicle. She's not keeping that vehicle eight, nine, 10 years. So how can I drive this vehicle for the lowest amount of money in my household? I'm going to shop all my offers. The dealer that wins the bid, I'm going to see what it is. Oh, look at that. It's six ninety dollars a month. I'll take it. This is how we are going to keep thousands of dollars in our household. As things continue to go up, I need you guys to be spending. I need you not only to be making sure your cars are below your max budget so that every single month you're not growing tired and weary of your car payment. That means it just needs to be below your max budget. And then the second thing we need is to make sure that you are driving the best possible product for that money. You could be below budget and look at what you're driving for the money and you're like, yeah, I'm below budget, but could I have gotten a better car for this money? Could I have gotten more car for this money? And I'm here to tell you that when you understand leasing, you're going to see it's no comparison. 690, uh, $690 a month for a dag on $1,100 a month vehicle to purchase. So, Short term, less than eight years, we always lease. We never purchase. Um, now, in another episode, when we start talking about, uh, you know, in another segment, we'll talk about overpriced leases because every lease is not equal. Y'all going to learn. We can't every lease deal. Even when you learn to shop, you must learn to shop. You must because some 80 percent of dealers are overpriced on their leases. 80 percent of dealers who gave Topa a quote. Let me come back from this screen. 80% of dealers who, who gave a quote to this young lady to on her BMW were a lot higher. Some of you even saw it on the video. It said it when she wrote it. It said, man, all these other offers were a lot higher. That's, that's, that's how it's supposed to be. So you can't go back and forth with one dealer. You must reveal the best dealer, the best offer through multiple offers. So that's what you do. And you do that whether you're leasing or purchasing. And when, when you start doing that, you'll, you'll understand. That's in the book. That's what I teach. Bids, bids, one-to-one -one negotiation is dead. I want y'all to never, I want y'all to eliminate one-to-one -one from our, we never do it. Because you cannot do that with any other item and win. 
You can't do it with any, you can't do it with jewelry. You can't do it with groceries. You can't do it with televisions. You can't do it with houses. One-to-one -one negotiations, you lose every time. You must see multiple options, multiple offers, and then we pick the best one. And that's gonna, what you see is that's gonna be done with loans we get, cars we buy, and cars that we sell. We don't trade. So, all right, yeah, this has been great. I need her contact. I don't know what you, um, I guess y'all having a conversation. I didn't know what y'all needed contact Why? All right, uh, let's see. Is buying and selling a car a good hustle? Um, I'm not really teaching people how to buy and sell cars because, um, you know, there's, I mean, yes, there's, if you, you want to go into the car business, that's not what I teach. Do I have to log out to purchase the book? You shouldn't have to. Let me try to reset. It's, if it's still, it should, it's, let me know if it's still showing the $97 price or if everybody was able to get the 75% the off price. Let us know. All right. I just reset it. So it should give you an opportunity to go back in there now and get your, uh, and get it at the 97% off. All right. Um, buy dealer loaner cars. Um, it, it depends. Those can be great opportunities. Those can be great opportunities. But again, we still need something to compare it to, Tina. Tina on Facebook said, buy dealer loaner cars. Now, we will buy or lease a loaner car if it's a great offer. So when we reach out to dealers, you'll see in the book, I teach you to go to the website because I give you my scripts. I tell you what to say. Some of you could do it by phone if you want to call a dealership and try to get multiple um, and try to get multiple offers. But I would only speak to a sales manager. And even then, you got to just make sure that you stick to you, but only speak to a sales manager. But the point is, if they have a loaner car, it needs to be so much better than what I could get a brand new one for. So if, for instance, if the, the dealer that wins the bid is offering me 3000 off on a brand new one, but a dealer with a loaner car is only offering me $3,000 off or 3500 off and it has 3000 miles on it, I'm going to go with the brand new one. But if I don't have anything to compare it to, then I might think 3000 off is a good offer for the loaning car. See what I'm saying? See, price assurance, price assurance is when you guarantee. I want y'all, listen, if you want price assurance, type PA in the comments. You want this every time you make a deal. Price assurance means I guarantee that I paid the lowest price that I could have paid. That's called price assurance. I want you to understand, some of you have been though, is that possible with cars? That's what I want you to move from now on. I never want you to make another car deal without price assurance. How does you? How do you get price assurance? Multiple offers. It's the same way you get price assurance when you're buying groceries, when you're buying you know, spaghetti sauce. I know I saw enough offers to know there was, no, there was nothing out there less. Not, oh, I went in, I looked at one brand and said, oh, I got to have it. I like those. And it was a dollar off. And I thought that would, that's, that, see, price assurance is the best thing with a car because you literally can look at all these offers and say, this is the best one. <laughs> it's amazing when you realize you're the prize. <laughs> Some of you, you'd be like, man, I, I haven't been treated like I'm the prize. I know we're going to change that. When you use the systems that I want you to use, you'll realize, dang, I've been the prize the whole time. You mean all of these banks and credit unions would like work this hard to try to give me It's all these options I got? It seemed like before I really didn't know all my options. That's right. But when you now change the way you shop and you now move into a bidding mindset, everyone I'm going to do business with must win the bid. The bank, the credit union must win the bid. And then I'm going to give the dealers a chance to see if they can beat it. Now, they bank's going to get a chance to bid. Um, very soon, we'll talk about how to do that without affecting your credit. I want to show you all this bank bidding war process. We have a specific way we shop for loans, credit unions, banks. We let dealers access our credit. And it, way it shows as one inquiry when it comes to affecting our score. You must learn that because when you see how much money is in the loans, you're going to be, you're going to be mad. You'll be like, dang, I never shopped around the way I should have for my loan. I never shopped around. I just, that's fine. No, there was no one to tell you. Now there is someone to tell you that if 
you have a $30,000 loan and the interest rate is 5.9, if you could have got 4.9, that'd have saved you a thousand dollars. Do you get what I'm saying? If you have a $50,000 loan, one point on the interest rate, say you $2,000. So we might imagine if you could get two points lower, say you for $4,000. So we are excited to try to get money off the car. We're going to be just as excited to make sure we're not giving that money in our loan. The banks are not loving us because, the you know, we don't want the banks to like us. <laughs> we want the banks to say, man, we barely making any money on this loan, but we'll take it. <laughs> You don't want the bank to say, oh, every time they need a loan, they just come right to us. They love us. You know, give them give them 5.9. They don't ask no question. Give them 6.29. Give them 7.2, whatever. You know, they they just, they're not going to shop. No, we don't want that. <laughs> so, all right, y'all. So I will be back for another segment. Um, you know, these, these are the things we're going to continue to do. Uh, we'll be live on all four platforms. Uh, we look to partner with more platforms in the future. So if there's a platform that y'all think we should be on streaming, let us know. Right now we are, you know, you know, uh, we are um, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Um, so it's been great. We had probably, you know, consistently four or five hundred people on here. Um, and so if you want to get your book at seventy five percent off, as long as the timer hasn't come down, you should click the TikTok bio. The name of the book is Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping. If you Google it, you'll see it's already rated uh, uh, 4.94 on Goodreads. We have 31 reviews. So we're on our way to being a five-star bestseller. Um, and it's really the people using it. So I want you all to use it. Get it for 75% off. Normal price is $97. Download it immediately. Start to use it. Um, if, you're on, if you're on YouTube or, or uh, Facebook, you can scan the QR code. And get your uh, and get your and get your copy, or go to Deshaun's book. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mandy. Uh, Facebook is the same handle. Deshaun the Auto Advisor on every channel, uh, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. It's always Deshaun the Auto Advisor. So uh, we'll be back to answer more questions. We'll be talking more about leasing, but we'll be talking more about deal structure, uh, shopping, how to check and make sure cars are reliable. Uh, there's a lot of cars going out here with bad reliability ratings, bad longevity ratings. So they are not the cars that we need to be buying for keepers. We got things we got to look out for y'all. Like it's, this is the ice. This is a, this is the tip of the iceberg. We're buying a car to keep, you know, how many people have bought a car? It wasn't quality. We didn't check longevity. I thought I was going to keep it eight years, 10 years, but cars started giving me issues. Transmission issues at 80,000 miles. I didn't know that. We got to make sure we're checking these things. We got to make sure we look into every, you know, so we'll, we'll break this down step by step. I'll be going over my system, my seven step system, and just going deep with pieces of it and answering you guys' questions. Uh, borrow against your money in the bank. Yeah, that's fine. Whatever, whatever gets you the biggest net return, Tina. She said, I don't get loans. Borrow against your money in the bank. As long as, you know, just whatever gets you the best net return. You know, uh, I'm, I'm just here to tell you that interest isn't the only loss on money. Opportunity cost is a is a loss when it comes to financial. If we if you were to, to you know, taking a class on finance, uh, opportunity cost is really if I could have put my money in, a, in, in something and made 10 percent on it. But my money was in a car and I didn't have that money. And that money is losing me 10 percent in the car. So let's just say I put the 20 grand in a car. And then every year that 20 grand is worth 2000 less than I'm losing. It's a negative 10% return every year on that, on that 20 grand. When I could have had that 20 grand somewhere getting me 10%, use the bank's money at 4%. And now I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm still at a net positive when it comes to, you know, my, am I richer at the end of the year? Am I richer at the end of the month? Um, so I just say that to say we've been taught when it comes to finding, we just talk interest, interest. Oh, I don't want to pay interest. I don't want to pay interest. But, we, but you know, I'm here to make sure everyone knows the total package of why people who don't pay cash for cars, who could afford to, who literally can write a $100,000 check for anything they want, they why they don't. See, I'm not interested in, you know, I'm interested in why the people who could pay cash for cars choose not to. And it's not what you taught, what you've been taught. Some of it's not because oh, they just love debt, debt, debt. 
now. These people have paid off houses. So these are the things that we're going to be talking about. So, um, and again, all in my book. If you want it all in one place, grab your copy. But yeah, this was a great segment. Uh, we will certainly be back. Uh, always a pleasure. And uh, just make sure you're subscribed so you do get notifications when we go live. You know, make sure you're subscribed on TikTok. Make sure you're following so that when we're live, you can jump on um, because we're going to be doing this a lot. All right. I'll see you all soon. God bless everybody.